Welcome to the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. A sold-out crowd, 75,000 plus a fitting tribute to the AFC division champion Miami Dolphins. And tonight, they go against the New York Jets. The Jets 7 and 8. They're trying to finish their season at 500. And sometimes, that's a pretty tough team to go up against. The Dolphins are looking for home field advantage. They can clinch a home field advantage tonight for the first playoff game if they can win tonight. And should they win tonight and the Chargers beat the Raiders on Sunday, well, they can have it throughout the entire playoffs. I'm Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and O.J. Simpson. But the Dolphins go without their young rookie tonight, Howard. They certainly do, and there he is, Dan Marino. Elated because he has made pro football history. He will be the starting quarterback for the AFC in the forthcoming Pro Bowl game elected by the other players in the league. But tonight, the man who filled in so handily against Atlanta a week ago, Don Strzok, will be working tonight. He has uncommon effectiveness against the Jets, historically. Right now, ready for the play by play in the opening kickoff the gipper handily an understatement Strzok last week 18 of 22 229 a couple of touchdowns first action really of the year and the Dolphins do want that home field advantage because over the last 14 years they have won over 80 percent of their games that they have played here we're looking deep to Fulton Walker as the Dolphins will receive Walker shaken up last week but nevertheless, he leads the NFL in kickoff returns over 26 yards of return. He was questionable. He spent a night in the hospital. This is Walker. He brings it out. And he did not hurt his average with that return. He spotted a little opening and just erupted out over the 30-yard line where the Dolphins will have a first down and 10. And here comes Don Strock. I mentioned those numbers. He was sensational last week against Atlanta. He's so cool. That was a 31-24 win over the Atlanta Falcons. Strzok has been around for a long time, and he's in his 10th year. He's sort of the fireman for these Dolphins, but he has provided sensational games. Remember the 81 playoff game against San Diego? He came off the bench in the second quarter. He was 29 of 43, four touchdowns, over 400 yards. He's leading it in a game tonight that they would certainly like to win. First down and 10, Tony Nathan, single setback. Wearing number 22 in the two tight ends are in the Strzok. Strzok reads it quickly and goes to Hardy. Hardy, who had a big game against Atlanta a week ago, held to a couple of yard pickup. It'll be second down and eight. Let's take a look at the defensive unit. Headed, of course, by Mark Gastineau with the 19 sacks. He's the best in the NFL through 15 weeks. Bob Cravel has really come on a middle linebacker for these Jets. And there is the secondary. The man who roams the middle, Darrell Ray, one of the finest in the game. Second down and eight, 34-yard line for the Dolphins. Andre Franklin comes in to join Tony Nathan as a setback. It's been raining over the past 24 hours. At times, heavily, the field, however, has been covered. It is dry. Nathan with a big opening, first down, out over the 40-yard line, up to the 43-yard line. And O.J., Nathan does so many things so well for this team. Yes, he's one of the uh, more underrated backs in the league, but he runs well, and he you see his average 4.5. If they gave him the ball a little more, he, he would have a serious uh, chance of leading the league in rushing. Well, maybe not leading the league, but he would get that 1,000 yards. Also into tonight, Nathan has 51 receptions. The Dolphins do not have a rusher or a receiver in the top 10, but they do have a, an 11-4 record. Second best with the Raiders in the NFL. Strzok sets up, fires, and it's complete. Gets it into Matt Moore, and Matt Moore is down to the 40-yard line of the Jets. And Strzok reading the defense well. Had to put that a little bit behind Matt Moore, and Matt Moore, who really had a comeback season, was right there. Take a look at the end zone replay here. You see Grable over there hustling over there, and he just got the ball in there a little behind him, but a real nice catch. That's Bobby Jackson covering. Good heady move by Matt Moore. You saw him hesitate because he did not want to get in front of that linebacker. Strzok read it with him. First and ten, the Dolphins near the 40-yard line. Duper is a speedy wide receiver to Strzok's right. Matt Moore up at the top of the screen. Going out to the tight end, and this is Dan Johnson, second-year man out of Iowa State. And he's up close to another first down, just a little bit short. Frank mentioned it was raining earlier. This is the way it was at 7.15 Eastern time tonight. But one difference. This time, unlike before the playoffs a year ago between these two teams, a talk covered the field. So the Jets are without excuses and already struck, 
Strzok is picking them apart the way he usually does. He's three for three. Last week in the first half against Atlanta, he went 11 for 11. Second down at about two. This is Andrew Franklin. This time he stacked up and breaks loose. And he's going to have the yardage for the first down, just on second effort. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll pick up the first round. Andrew Franklin, now in his third year, coming in tonight with a little over 700 yards rushing, and an interesting stat on Franklin. Shula uses his people to their best of their ability. Franklin has not had one reception this season. Let's say something about his ability to catch the ball. <laughs> but he gets the most out of them. But a great Shula group. does. As John Madden once put it, he makes the hole better than the parts. That's the story of Shoe. They've Along always been a team. Longtime colleague, Bill Arnsparger, is moving on to LSU after this season. They have been some team. Stock, a lot of time, great timing effort, underthrown, however. Tried to get it to Matt Moore, who had broken out in front of Ken Troy. Stock under a little bit of a pressure. Had to release that, actually, before Moore made his final out move. That's the only way they're going to stop that man, Strzok, is by getting to him. The series record tied at 17 apiece with that one tie. They're tied here. They're tied in New York. The Jets had a whammy on them for a couple of years while Walt Michaels was the coach. They won seven of eight and tied the other one. But last year, the Dolphins beat the Jets three times. Walt Michaels coaches. Second and ten. Scott Cooper. Super duper. And super duper. <laughs> having a great year. Came in tonight needing 68 yards to reach 1,000 yards on the season. He got a bunch of it there. He only needed 65 yards to become the all-time leading receiver of the Dolphins, and he's getting, getting close already. They made it look so easy, the whole drive, like playing a high school team, didn't they, Chase? Well, they did, a, as you see Duper catch the ball there, they did a great job of throwing the quick passes, forcing the linebackers to rush out there and get on their man, play the short guys uh, tight, and they got the, got the wide receivers downfield and finding those zones, those open areas, and... Touchdown. Run. Nearly five minutes off the clock, or nearly four minutes. Uwe von Schaumann for the conversion. Don Strzok will place it down. Splitting the uprights, and the Dolphins bring the first possession, the length of the field, for a Miami touchdown. And this man sets it up and takes it in. We'll be back. Today, there's a new power on the road. The first Nissan 300ZX. Three liters of fuel-injected turbo-thrusted V6 motion. 200 horses strong. The all-new Nissan 300ZX. It'll snap you from zero to awesome. At your Datsun dealer. Shop introduces a revolutionary change for the copy center. The compact, affordable, Shop SF900. <gasps> it has three different reduction modes and an enlargement mode. It does a fast 40 copies per minute and has an optional sorter and automatic document feeder. In short, it does all the work of a copy center without taking up all the room. <laughs> The compact, affordable Sharp SF900. From Sharp Minds come Sharp Products. The Cowboys tangle with the 49ers on ABC's Monday Night Football. It's a festive occasion here in the Orange Bowl tonight. It is sold out. It's being televised locally. Of course, football fever is settled in here in Miami. We have a big Orange Bowl coming up. The meeting with Miami University and Nebraska. They're the uh, Jet Return men. Preston Brown, one of the real finds for the Jets this year. They got him from New England. He's up there with about a 24-yard average return. And Uwe von Schaumann with a sore leg that developed this past Wednesday is going to kick off. We were told that perhaps the putter would, Robbie. This is Preston Brown. And he has popped with the 20-yard line. You got to feel bad for Preston Brown. You know he was coming into the game hoping he can pop one and possibly maybe lead the league in kickoff returns, but 
that certainly hurt his average in any chance he may have had of uh, catching Walker. This is Richard Todd, the quarterback. Had a tough year, 60%, 17 mm -hmm. touchdowns, but he's had 24 interceptions. And in the last three meetings against the Dolphins, he's been intercepted 12 times. He's had a tough season. Scott Durking, single setback. Dusty Walker in motion, and Todd is back on his first offensive play. Fires, and it's complete. Gets it to Durking, working out of the backfield for a gain of about eight. It'll be second down and two, hit there by Ernie Roan. And no one plays this game better, I don't think, than Miami defensively. They move around a great deal, but it is organized chaos, if you will, choreographed by Bill Arnsparger, as perhaps no defense I've ever watched has been choreographed. They have a couple of pro bowlers. In fact, they have six all together. We'll talk about that during the course of the evening. But one of them is Bob Baumauer and Doug Betters. Betters with 16 sacks. Todd Schuller does not hold on. He's hit hard by one of the Bruise brothers. That was Glenn Blackwood of the Blackwood brothers. Hit Schuller just as he collected the ball, and Schuller did not hold on. It'll be third down and two. Well, both teams seem to have the same uh, idea. They come out and try to hit that quick pass, relatively short pass, to force those linebackers to, to hustle out of there, and then they sometimes try to pop a run up the middle. Get those linebackers' attention. Third down and three is Scott Durkin, 25, Freeman McNeil, 24, but Todd is back. Looks wide to the receiver. Good defensive effort intended out there for wide receiver Wesley Walker, and that was Charles Bowser who fulfilled some mighty big shoes this past year when the Dolphins lost Larry Gordon tragically this, to a heart attack last spring. There's a team that had second and two. They're in their own territory at their 28. You want to get upfield at the very least rather than give the other team good field position. The signal caller, who in this case is the coach, elected not to. So they punt. There is Mark Clayton. Chuck Ramsey on the punt. Clayton coming back from a broken rib some three weeks ago. He was questionable, as was Fulton Walker tonight. And the Dolphins, who scored in their very first possession, have good field position. They will be out at the 38-yard line. 34-yard punt by Ramsey. We'll be back. Christmas card was sent to you by the people at Miller High Life. Merry Christmas. It was a non-title bout, and Oscar Mooney's won. Now they meet again, and Jeff Chandler's crown is at stake. Plus, the World Rhythmic Gymnastics Championship. ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday. For all of you who are being besieged by winter storms that are sweeping the country, welcome back to the Orange Bowl of Miami. Temperature in the 70s. We've had some rain, but certainly it is much better than what many of you are experiencing. First down and 10, the Dolphins leading 7-0 from their own 38-yard line. Tony Nathan stacked up. Gaston was there. He got a little help from Kenny Neal coming in from the right side. There will be a loss of a couple of yards. Gaston is not, not one of the favorites down here. See Gasano, they've been picking on him for the last couple of weeks running the ball, but the guy that made that play was Glecko. I mean, he came in inside, forced the runner to go outside where Gasano uh, was waiting for him. That's exactly right. In fact, Gasano, many contend, is physically the finest athlete in the league. But he's been giving ground to the run and not playing it well, and he's not been developed in that regard. And that's why he's not a starter in the Pro Bowl this year, I believe. That's right. Movement, that was Pucko who jumped off sides. He, too, will be in the Pro Bowl. So the Jets have Pro Bowlers on their left side of their 4-3. Flag is down. 
That game will be January the 29th, and you'll see it right here on ABC. Here's the call from Gene Barth. 73 defense, offside. Becca made a remarkable comeback from that ruptured patella tendon in his right knee early a year ago. Hey, you know, he's done a super job, Kletko, of keeping the trap off Gatineau. I noticed in last week's game up against Pittsburgh, they were able they were able to hook him a lot and get outside of him, and I was a little surprised at that. You know, he's led the league in sacks, and you would think that a defensive lineman who leads the league in sacks You're would be a spotter about in the Pro Bowl. We are the Pro Bowl, exactly but because the he hasn't done run. Making. But he hasn't stopped the run, and the players around the league know that when it comes time to vote. And following the penalty, it's second down and seven. The ball at the 41-yard line, and struck back once again. At the time, looking for the speedster, Duper. And Duper saying that he was bumped by Bobby Jackson. There is no flag. And Duper, O.J., I know you'd appreciate, has that great speed. He well, was a 10 to 100 meters. He was an anchor man for the NCAA 400 meter championship team back in 1980. Oh, he got bumped a little bit, but did you see how he ran by Jackson? He I mean, that's accelerated amazing. The beyond fly. his early speed, and that's yeah. what he can do. And that's really what Frank was talking about. You're talking about a world class speed runner, or and the, they can do that. Well, imagine if he would have played the first five games. He didn't play much until Daryl Harris got into the doghouse with Don Shula. And he's had quite a season. He's an all-pro, voted by the other players in the league. Third down and seven. Strike from the shotgun. That's for Joe Rose over the middle, and this will be short by about a foot, I think. It's right in front of us. So it appears. The same. It looks as though it will be short. Bob Grable there defensively for the Jets. Same problem that always plagues Don Meredith. Deuce, you've heard him talk about it. If you're going to receive a pass, you've got to make first down territory. Well, you've got to know where you're at. Yeah, when Rose was running a little turn in, a delayed across the middle, a little turn in, I think uh, it was a good play by the defense because he, I think he ran his right route the way they wanted him to. Uh, the defense guy, the defensive guy was just on him really well. Eric Springs dropped for the Jets. He leaves the NFL and punt returns. He won the New Orleans game four weeks ago with a 76-yard scamper. And Reggie Roby, a rookie out of Iowa, six-round draft pick, he's having a tremendous year, averaging just under 43 yards, but he puts it up unbelievably high. Well, that was unusual. Now we have a delay, and we have a flag down, and I think that Miami's going to have to settle for a five-yard delay. For some reason, the center didn't even uh, line up over the ball. No, they wanted to try and... Well, that's true. That They couldn't have even been trying to draw them offside without never lined the up center lining up. Delay a game, number four offense, still fourth down. But you know, there's a lot of games within the game, and uh, possibly, you know, Roby has an opportunity to break the uh, record here for punts. He's averaging 42.9 yards a punt, and he can break the season record held by a guy named George Roberts. He looked at so. the officials and said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> as they call up number four, but that's how they credit it. Well, that's going to help. Help it. With a beautiful shot. And he'll put that out of bounds at the 12-yard line. He got as much out of that as he could. Hit up the sideline. 46-yard punt. And so the rookie from Iowa, Reggie Roby, continues the pace. Tonight, fond memories of poetry in a football uniform as Old Spice Aftershave and Cologne presents NFL Classics. Well, Dad, I like it. Your daddy loves Old Spice. Why? That's what makes Daddy smell so special. I love the smell of my daddy. You put the ribbon on. This Christmas, people all over America are giving the men in their lives the classic scent of Old Spice, the clean, fresh, masculine scent so many women love. I love the smell of Daddy. And so does Mommy. For a Christmas gift he'll really love, give him the classic scent of Old Spice. From those first tense moments in the huddle, to the graceful downfield strides with a ball in his hands, San Diego's Lance Allworth was the most feared deep receiver of his league and his time. He flew through the air, leaping and fighting for the ball, making catch after catch, setting new standards and breaking old records as Bambi, the first AFL player in the Hall of Fame. The Pope and his Vatican. Don't miss this highly acclaimed ABC News special Sunday. 
cheery little group here in the Orange Bowl. Considering the weather is plaguing much of the country, well, it's a delight to be down here. You're going to be here quite a while, Howard. Yes, quite an anniversary for the juice, as we noted at the top of the telecast. I was there for Wide World, handling the interview, which he would not do until he had his entire offensive line. We ran over. Denny Lewin got terribly upset. First down and 10, and... Todd tries to get it into the tight end. Jerome Barkham, nothing doing there. Good defensive coverage. Interesting stat on the Jets, Frank. They are the poorest team in the AFC in completing passes for 20 yards and more. The current offense features, in the main, the dump-off pass and the kind of short thing you just saw to the tight end, Jerome Barkham. And they are paying the pipe of four. Have second down and 10. Ricky Schuler, Jerome Barkham, two tight end offense now. And out of the eye formation, Freeman McNeil. Who led the league in rushing a year ago. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. He maybe squeaked a yard out of it. It'll bring up third down, long yardage for the Jets and Richard Todd. Bowser again defensively. Freeman McNeil, of course, missed seven weeks with that shoulder separation at the outset of the season. Came in tonight with a little over 600 yards rushing. Well, he played strongly against New Orleans in his comeback game. But since then, they've been stopping. Now, that's the sign that says ABC got the juice, but we started it with Miami has the oranges, but Buffalo has the juice. Third and eight. Go Camper in quickly on Todd. A flag goes down, deep downfield. Todd was trying to get the ball to Lamb Jones and was saying that Kozlowski was interfering. He, of course, one of the sixth backs in there for the Miami Dolphins, so that'll give the Jets a first down out over the 30-yard line. Now that was the pass thrown downfield as we wait the call here. Interference, number 40 defense, first down. And Lamb Jones has been signally successful, as you note, Frank, in recent games. There was the penalty. You saw it right there. Clean penalty, as you said, Howard. Uh, that's one of the bright spots for the uh, Jets this year has been Lamb Jones. He's really come on, and that was that's something to look forward to. Upending Richard Todd. First down and 10. The ball out over the 32-yard line for the Jets. They trail 7-0. Eight minutes remaining in the first quarter. Todd finds the man. Steps out of the pocket, and he hits Lamb Jones. And Lamb Jones will have a first down to the 43-yard line of the Miami Dolphins, working in front of William Judson, and a good move by Richard Todd to get out of trouble. An excellent move by Todd, who this year had difficult times with the interceptions that Frank noted earlier as you look at Lamb Jones, and who's been a maligned quarterback, one who was good enough to take the Jets to one game short of the Super Bowl a year ago. He doesn't deserve the raps he's taken. First down inside the 43-yard line. Lamb Jones with a fine reception. It's the Jets on the move. Todd Freeman McNeil, he holds on. And had a collision at the 35-yard line against Jetson. And McNeil won that definitely as he'll get another first down for the Jets. We're very close to it. I think we'll see a measurement on this. And as we mentioned Lamb Jones in the last seven games he's had 28 receptions coming into tonight there's a man bill hampton who missed his first jets game tonight in years he's the equipment manager he was the man that called lamb jones aside a few weeks ago and he said look great receivers work hard lamb and lamb's a youngster that really listens so he starts staying out after practice working on catching the ball working on the patterns as you can see just a little bit short but bill hampton who they call no problem the equipment manager got this young man aside and said look you're going to look back on it someday, and you're going to regret that you didn't put every effort into it. And Lamb Jones, I don't think, really thought he was not. But ever since that little chat and the extra work after practice, Lamb Jones is playing up to the all-pro potential that many people have felt that he's had. And if he continues to do so, that will inevitably, as you look at Coach Walton, who was once Don Shula's roommate with the Washington Redskins, a little detailed fact, Lamb Jones will ultimately free Wesley Walker. Second down. You saw how much. Jerking in motion. This is Kenny Lewis. 
And Lewis steps out of bounds. Gets the first down. That was Kenny Lewis's second attempt of the season. Of course, the Jets are playing without My Mike Augustiniak, injured reserve with the knee, and, and a very celebrated release of a Dwayne Crutchfield a few weeks ago. So they're down to Kenny Lewis, whom they had back in 1981. They waived him. Originally was with Oakland. Kenny Lewis I'm speaking of. That was his second attempt thus far of the season. First down and 10, 31 yard line. Schuler in motion. Here comes Freeman McNeil. McNeil breaks to the outside and was looking for the end zone and held there by Gerald Small. And look, as you look at this game coming in tonight, I watched William Andrews last week of Atlanta go for 161 yards rushing against the Dolphins. That was their problem a year ago. Bill Arnsparger has him down defensively against the rush this year from 24th last year to 6th. But William Andrews really ripped them. And while McNeil does not run, perhaps with the strength that William Andrews does, nevertheless, he's got a lot of power and a lot of quickness. And they attack the Dolphins inside, which is what you really have to do if you're going to be successful running on them. McNeil got eight. Gets the call again. He'll have the first down. He's inside the 20-yard line as the Jets are on a drive. Well, there's a flag down here. Flag down far across the field. Illegal motion. It could have been the motion man. They were bringing the tight end back with a block inside. And he did look like he was moving towards the line of scrimmage. Well, I mentioned that uh, with the Dolphins, you normally have more success running inside rather than outside. And let's hear the call here. Illegal motion, 31 up and still second down. I mentioned in an earlier telecast, Duke, I don't, uh, Juice, I don't think you were with us. Duke, that's a rather good name <laughs> for you. Uh, that the finesse teams are Miami and Dallas. The strength teams are the Redskins and the Raiders. I agree with that. They should skip the playoffs and go right to the Super Bowl, I guess. <laughs> the second and seven, seventh play of the drive. To Todd, he had Dolphins all around him. Betters was there. Ajudue was there. Bo Camper was there. Due deflected that pass. Yeah, he made it, but I'll tell you, I, I noticed one thing last week against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers that Todd threw the short pass, uh, as you can see, Dewey coming around. I don't think that ball, well, he may have forced him to throw the ball sooner than he would, would have uh, liked to, and I think that was better as maybe. Uh, but he hasn't thrown the ball, speaking of Todd, he hasn't thrown the ball downfield too effectively. He throws that short pass, and you mentioned how he, they've been throwing the ball short more than any other team in football, but he does not throw the ball downfield too well this year. I wonder if there could be something wrong with his, with his arm. Todd is in single digits on the 32nd clock. And counting down. Third down and seven. And he gets it off. A little mix-up in the backfield, but Kenny Lewis breaks it and inside the 20 for another Jet first down. Kenny Lewis out of Virginia Tech. But well, that was a little de de uh, delayed draw play. It worked for him. I mentioned earlier that Miami is a tough team to run outside on because they, they teach the defensive linemen not to penetrate. They get their hands on the offensive linemen, they slide to the ball, and they stay in position, and they're probably probably the best pursuing team in football. So if you're going to beat them running the ball, you got to pop them in there quick. Mickey Schuler, as you saw, got the play from Joe Walton, brings it into the huddle. Since Lamb Jones has been playing so well, the Jets are not using their wide receivers with the plays. They use the tight ends, Barkham and Schuler. First down and 10. Single setback is Freeman McNeil. The ball just inside the 20. Play action by Richard Todd. He's in trouble, but McNeil is wide open. <laughs> Easy touchdown, Jets, as McNeil was wide open. The Dolphins in a blitz. They were sending linebacker A.J. Douay. And a very good, cool effort by Richard Todd. And poor Glenn Blackwood, he didn't have a chance. You get a back like McNeil, you know, that wide open with a guy watching. McNeil is going to swing right out of the backfield. Actually, I uh, think somebody missed their assignment there. Obviously, I think Ernie Roan was supposed to pick him up, and he, he thought McNeil was coming up to block him, and he didn't. But look at that love, Blackwood. No chance in the world. That lay and we saw the movement. And 4.47 remaining in the first quarter. Here's Dean Barth again. And 
Could have, could have gone by uh, Blackwood blindfold at that time. Give a guy like him that much room. He is quick, and he works well out of that backfield. Well, he puts it through, and we've got a tie football game here in the first quarter in a game that the Dolphins, they feel, is so necessary. They want the home field in the playoffs, and they're playing like it tonight. The who? The tax people. Oh, today. Oh, all right. You call the accountant. Running your own business, you've got to give it your best. And that means personal computers from digital. For extensive business software, graphics, communications, plus a revolutionary customer support plan. Not even the world's largest computer company gives you so much. Oh, hi. We've been waiting for you. But the second largest does. Digital Equipment Corporation. <laughs> so, you're considering more life insurance? Uh-huh. In fact, a Northwestern Mutual agent showed us this industry rating. You've talked to the quiet company. Mm-hmm. A Northwestern Mutual was rated number one for low-cost whole life insurance. <laughs> this superior life insurance performance is another leadership benefit available only from agents with Northwestern Mutual Life, the quiet company. Well, they're a tough act to follow. I know, I know. Richard Todd on a successful drive gets the Jets on the scoreboard. Jets, of course, looking to go 8-8 eight eight on the season. Disappointing one. Many people thought they'd be in the Super Bowl at the end of this year. That such is certainly not the case. And, of course, the people that could be there once again. The Miami Dolphins, these are some of their fans. They sold out the Orange Bowl, 75,000 plus for tonight's encounter. Golden Walker is dropping. Leading the NFL in kickoff through kickoffs through 15 weeks. Pat Leahy set to put it in the air. And Walker, this time with the deep kick of Leahy, will stay in the end zone. All right, Dan Marino will be the first rookie to start in the Pro Bowl game. I asked him just before game time how he learned about it. Well, Howard, uh, in a meeting, Coach Shula named all the starters and all the guys that made in the Pro Bowl. Must have been a moment of high elation for you. Well, it was a good feeling uh, when he announced it. Uh, I felt very honored, and it was the type of feeling that it felt good to me because of the fact that some other guys on our team made the team also. Dan Marino, we saw him in exhibition. Howard and O.J. up against... The Washington Redskins, we knew right away that they had a good one and they had a very cool one. First and ten now for the Dolphins. As Scott leads the attack, Marino, very sore knee, missed last week's game. But certainly will be ready for the playoffs. That's Tony Nathan on first and ten. You mentioned a very cool one. He is that and something more. He says all the right things, always giving credit to his teammates. But his self-confidence is not an undercurrent self-confidence. It manifests itself. It borders on being cocky. That's how good he knows he is. He'll control it under Shula. You can bet that. Bet on that. Second down, less than a yard for the Dolphins. That's Mark Clayton in motion. He gets it on the reverse. Gets inside a jet and a good pursuit by the jet defense. Headed by number 93, Marty Lyons slipping over from the right tackle position and a good read by the Jet defense. Yeah, especially cool. by Mark Gastineau because he evidently is playing his position first before he takes off after the quarterback and he was the guy Which that, is what he did uh, there. Although he was ridden out on a great block by Stevenson, he still delayed the run long enough so that the defense could get up there and quell the play. So give Gastineau credit on that. Good job on that. Third down and nine. Duper is right. And Doriel Harris now goes at the top of your screen. And the shotgun. Stock under a little bit of pressure and tried to get it to Rose. And it's a pass that could have been picked off by Lance Mell. And if he had caught that ball, Lance Mell would have tied an NFL record for interceptions by linebackers. And Strock now is shaken up. He was hit and hit hard. 
But Mel was perfectly positioned. There's a case of a linebacker being perfectly positioned. Look at it, Chiefs. And Spock does a good job. He tries. Oh, he's oh, he got a oh. oh, helmet right there in the sternum there. That's Klecko. And I've got a feeling that Stock has got the wind knocked out of him. And hopefully it's not something worse because Klecko at 265 pounds, not only hit him, he drilled him right into the turf. Stock is not one of your more mobile quarterbacks around. This is Bruce David Woodley opened the season of the starter, was a starter in the Super Bowl a year ago, the starter for the Dolphins the last couple of years. Couldn't get things happening in the early going, and Marino stepped in the fourth game of the season and has they've been unable to get him out of there other than because of the knee injury. Brock will get a chance to breathe because it's fourth down and Reggie Roby is on and Kirk Springs is back and the Jets should have good field position barring a mishap with 350 remaining in the first quarter we're tied at seven Kirk Springs another guy was trying to lead the league in kickoff returns one of the games within this game and there's a lot of guys around the league especially Greg Pruitt out in LA like to see the Jets cover this. That doesn't turn play. over for Roby, and it takes a bit of a jet bounce, and the Jets will have good field position. They're on 43-yard line. And Roby was pressured Roby. there, Frank. Stock appears to be okay on the sidelines. We'll get a report if we can. We'll be back in a moment. Nissan trucks are... Can this 59.99 Nissan haul 1,400 pounds? Yep. In a double wall steel bed? Yep. With the most powerful standard engine in its class? Yep. Anyone else give you all this for a sticker price of 59.99? Nope. Only Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. 11:05 p.m. The Hospital for Special Surgery, New York. And where are the surgeons? Watching television. Not just any television. A Sony with a remarkable Trinitron system for a picture that's critically focused, critically lifelike. Maybe that's why Sony won an Emmy for its picture. Something no other TV could have done. Not if their life depended on it. performance Dick Anderson put on here, Howard. That was some game. That was when Shula called the intentional safety to preserve the victory. And we were right on top of it. Yes. Surely yeah. You'll be skiing with Dick in another week, won't you? We'll be out of bail in about 10 days with the Andersons. He is a great skier. First down and 10. 43-yard line. Todd hands off. This time to Marion Barber. He bounces off. Due. And then Doug Fetters collects him after a gain of a yard, a yard and a half. Got to give the Jets credit. Miami made it look like they were playing a high school team in scoring in three minutes and 18 seconds. Strzok carrying them downfield with ridiculous ease. But the Jets have fought back, and Todd threw the key pass to McNeil to tie seven and seven. Second down, long yardage, good blitz down to the Dolphins. Bill Arnsparger likes to send them. Good pickup. This time, again, Schuler is hit. This time, it is the other Blackwood, Lyle Blackwood, that unloads on Schuler, and Schuler is unable to hold on, and Schuler is slow getting up. Yeah, they're trying to make this an extra long offseason for Schuler. That's twice he ran uh, basically the same pattern, and twice they were waiting for him. Barkham coming over to see how Mike Schuler is. Until you throw some balls deep downfield, Plays like that aren't going to open up to you for you too much. You got to throw downfield to get those safeties worried about getting beat deep, and then those shorter patterns will open up for you. Schiller shaking up. You saw in the replay, he took that blow on the shoulder, which is quite fortunate. It is one thing the Blackwoods will do, they will really pop you. Third down and eight. This will be an interesting play call. Funny thing about this game, I'm sure the Jets had a tough time getting up during the week, but when they start beating on you through a few series, 
you tend to get up and ready to play. They've only worked out two days. They came down to work out last night, and the field was covered. It was raining, so they couldn't. Todd has the time, and he gets it off to Dirk, and he doesn't hold on. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, this is turning into batting practice for the Dolphins secondary. That was William Judson who put the hammer on uh, Scott Durking out of the backfield. Jets must throw the ball deep to open up those medium passes. Jets remember him and their 32-14 loss earlier in the season to the Dolphins. Judson picked off three of Todd's passes in one quarter. Chuck Ramsey back to punt. Clayton is back. Clayton with a little over a 10-yard average had a 60-yard touchdown earlier in the season. Dangerous man. Eighth round rookie pick out of Louisville. Beautiful punt by Ramsey. Clayton bobbles at the 15 and upended and instantly there. So the Dolphins will start at their 15-yard line. And we want to remind you, coming up tomorrow, college football at its finest. So they play some of the finest. Division I AA. See Western Carolina, they have an 11 and 2 record. They go against Southern Illinois, 11 and 1 from Charleston, South Carolina, right here on ABC, 1:30 Eastern Time. Strock is back, just the wind knocked out of him, as we thought. But if you ever had the wind knocked out of you, and I know Juice has, uh, you feel like it's terminal. Juice has arthritis. <laughs> on the 15 yard line, just over the 15. Nathan, and Nathan is piled up. The Jets, of course, play the classical 4-3 defense. One of the few teams remaining that play the 4-3 defense. And it does help Mark Gastineau, and I'll take nothing away from Gastineau. He is one of the finest athletes I've ever seen at 6'5 and 265. And we have a Joe Klecko inside. We've touched on it throughout the course of the year. Gastineau working with Klecko can really do a lot of things that, for instance, Doug Petters, who plays in a 3-4, cannot do with Miami. That's the time remaining in the first quarter. And a second down and eight. Movement by the Dolphins. Actually, on the previous play, it was David Overstreet in the game. And if, if Overstreet ever comes and play the ball that they, they expect him to play, the ball that he's capable of playing, this Dolphin team oh, he did last awesome. week. That's the point, Frank. And that again. Ball start, 87 offense. Okay, with that call. That's the point, really. The way Shula brings people along, the way he brought Marino along, now he's bringing Overstreet along just the right way, trying to rebuild his confidence after a mediocre period because he had failed even in the Canadian League with the Alouettes. Last game, 12 carries, 83 yards for Overstreet. Yeah, he can give them in their running game what Duper has done for their passing game. He had only carried it 12 times in the previous six games. But Shula said he was going to give it to him, and he did. Mm -hmm. And he had the best production of any Miami running back a week ago for the entire year. That's Andre Franklin struggling. And the Dolphins have got themselves, I think, into a fight tonight as Franklin works his way back up to maybe just inside the original line of scrimmage. Game's early yet, 120 and counting down the first quarter. They'll mark it up close to the 18, so it'll put Strock into a third down and eight situation. Nathan comes back in. Three wide receivers now for the Dolphins. Doriel Harris, 82, Duper, 85, Matt Moore, 89, and Joe Rose, who is almost like a wide receiver, is also there. From the shotgun, third and eight. Rock. Trying to get to Rose, pass interference. And Darrell Ray was running stride for stride. Darrell Ray, if turned around a little more quickly, would have intercepted it. So that should move the Dolphins up to a first down over their own 40-yard line. Interference, 29 defense, first down. Actually, it was Johnny Lynn. Johnny Lynn, who's been a big play ball player for the Jets, but who goes next year to the L.A. Express. Interestingly, the Jets have been very hurt by the USFL, and Leon Hess has reported, the owner of the Jets, to have said he's had enough. He's opening up the pocketbook, and the Jets will lose no more players. 
Mr. Hess says, oh, somebody's mm -hmm. looking for a fight. Number 28 in particular. On first and 10, live action, Strock back. Fires the shot, it's complete. Gets it out. The man, Cooper. Mark yeah. Cooper came in tonight needing 68 yards for 1,000, and he's collected a few already. The Jets would be well advised to stop with the attempted fisticuffs and pay attention to the game. Well, I'd like to say at least they're fired up. You know, it's pretty tough to get a team motivated who's out of the playoff running this last game. I've been in this situation a number of times, and normally the only thing that can that keeps you going is pride. And the coach can get a pretty good gauge of the guys who really want to play. Some guys, I've seen them just quit. I mean, literally on their way to the airport, you know, in the, in the middle of the game. But these guys came to play tonight. Well, it's much to know whether the Dolphins will get another playoff before time expires here in the first quarter. They won't. They're going to watch the seconds tick off. So the Dolphins have a first down and 10. They're at the 38-yard line of the Jets. We'll be back with second quarter action in a moment. Devlin biggest game of the year and you couldn't get tickets welcome to miller town you did This kid just got a video game for Christmas. He could look forward to years of fun trying to reach 18 minutes. This kid just got a Commodore home computer. He can look forward to learning basic computer language, doing his phone programs, playing some games along the way, and maybe even inventing his own games. Oh, a final argument for the Commodore 64 or Vic 20. Someday, both kids will be looking for a job. Listen to these stuffy noses. Afra doesn't have it. Strip tan doesn't have it. Only Sinex has it. Ooh. That quick feeling of relief from instantly penetrating Vicks vapors, plus a powerful decongestant that opens nasal passages and allows you to breathe freely. Ah, complete relief. For hours and hours, Sinex gives you both instant relief Ooh. and complete relief. Ah. Vicks Sinex in regular strength and 12-hour extra strength. Well, they'll have him back. And he could, unless Dan Fouts has an unbelievable day against the Raiders on Sunday, and that won't be easy. He could lead the AFC in passing very easily. He's the leader as of tonight through 15 games, but he's not playing, of course. Don Stock remains on. First down and 10 as we begin the second quarter. 38-yard line of the Jets. The Dolphins on the move. Stock Duper. has Duper open. And we're going to get a flag. And not a bad defensive play, I didn't think, by Jerry Holmes. Well, he made that flag. Wait, I think, I think Holmes may have got his left arm on Duper's shoulder when he went up for the ball. But we'll take, I'm sure we'll see it in replay. It was well, real close. I, I, I agree with Meredith. He went into a long dissertation on this. Interference, 47 defense, first down. Now they laid that out a little bit. The so no contest that Duper really had Holmes beaten. I well, hung with, up a little bit. I agree with that, but look well, at that. Look at that left arm, though. I think he I hit just... him about two strides before the ball yeah. got there. He did. Yeah. That left arm, here's a reverse angle look. We'll see if we can see it better. It'd be pretty tough to beat the shot we just had. I'd go back to letting the defensive backs watch chuck his left all arm. over the field. You watch it. Watch the left arm on the head. His there. Right the ball's arm. not there. It's his left arm. If it's his left the arm, you've changed No, the left arm came over his head, his oh. helmet. is the right arm that went for the ball. Okay. First down, goal to go. Franklin, Flecko drags him down. Just inside the two-yard line. And it was Bill Arnsparger's birthday today. It was Joe Walton's birthday yesterday. Joe turning 48 years old. There's Arnsparger. He'll be moving on to LSU. They love their football down there. It's a hotbed. But there's some great people there. They spent 10 days with the Special Olympics International Games. They turned out 65,000 people 
to the opening ceremonies. They had over 2,500 volunteers helping. That's where Bill will be going to LSU after this season. Second down, goal to go. Oh. Wide open. Over three. Out of the backfield. Good play action by Strzok. Easy touchdown. Two long throws. Two interference calls. Touchdown. David Overstreet, handled well by Don Shula. Howard touched on it. Went up a couple of years ago to Montreal. Fumbled the ball 16 times up there. He started out the season, fumbled again four times at the beginning of the year. They put him on injured reserve, sent him home. He had been the Dolphins' number one draft pick of three years ago. Don Shula brought him back. He eased him back into the lineup. He had a super game last <laughs> week against Atlanta. He has scored tonight once again. And he's fired up and primed for the playoffs. Uwe Van Schaman for the conversion. Dolphins go back out on top. Dolphins leading 14 to 7. Visions of home field advantage dancing in their heads. We'll be back. MasterCard, find me a bargain. MasterCard, you're so chic. Give us your special cargo. Nissan Technology can handle it. The Sentra Wagon, over 60 cubic feet of hauling, sprawling space, harnessed to a high-mileage Hemi head power plant. The Sentra is a wagon wonder from Nissan. It is major motion. Come on, come on, come on. Your Dotson dealer. The Cowboys tangle with the 49ers on ABC's Monday Night Football. Early moments of the second quarter. And the Dolphins get it in. Touchdown pass. Stock to Overstreet. And the Jets now have dropped Kirk Springs and Preston Brown. Ulu Von Shaman remains the kicker. I mentioned earlier that he had a slight muscle pull earlier in the week and they rested him and they were prepared to go with Reggie Roby but Von Schaumann is still kicking. Preston Brown and he'll bring it up. Out of the 20-yard line. Hit right at the 20-yard line. Frank mentioned that Bill Onsbarger will be the head coach of LSU next year. I asked him in view of the way he's loved here why he's leaving. It's something I thought a lot about, and it was just something, I guess you might say it was a challenge I wanted uh, with LSU and the uh, university. I've, I've been on the other sideline down at Tiger Stadium, and I, I, I guess I kind of wanted to be on the, on the right sideline because they have great fans and they have a great, great tradition, and I just want to be a part of that, and I want to be involved in it. And uh, I, true, I could have probably stayed here for the next uh, 10 years, uh, defensing, uh, working with Don, and I've enjoyed it. My children have grown up here, and we've enjoyed it. But uh, we're looking forward to LSU, and we're looking forward to the challenges that LSU uh, will present. That was Scott Durking out of the backfield. Bill Arnsparger talking about his going on to become head coach at LSU. That noise in the background <laughs> was an equipment machine. They're working over the outside of the field, out beyond the sidelines, to try and get that part of the field dry. The main part has been covered, as we noted, by a top. Thus the background noise. Durkin got seven, second down and three, top back, under pressure. And he does get it off, and I think they'll mark it as a sack because he was in the grasp of Bob Baumauer, another pro bowler. Todd said he was able to get it loose, and he did indeed get it on the hands of Durking, but they put that one in a few years ago to try and save quarterbacks. First quarter stats, first downs almost even. Passing yards, Miami the edge. Total yards, Miami the edge, but not overwhelmingly time of possession, two-minute edge for Miami. 14-7, Miami to score. Loss of about 11 yards on that. It'll bring up third down and 13, and there's no question. Bob Maurer was certainly had him in the grasp, and that is the rule, and the whistle had blown. Don fires. 
tried to get it in. Three Miami Dolphins in there covering Jerome Barkham very tightly. Glenn Blackwood, perhaps the one who put the cruncher on that one. But it'll bring up fourth down, and Ramsey drops out once again, and now Clayton drops back in an area that should give the Dolphins good field position. What a difference in the coverage is by the respective secondary. Now, even though that was a ball that could have been caught, I know there's a lot of players around the league that's glad Arnsberger is leaving. I wish S uh, LSU would have offered him that job when I was playing. He was particularly tough you know, on he, me. In 10 years, under Shula here, he has either been first or second in points scored against the Dolphins. Now, that's rather remarkable. Least points. Eight times when the lead in the fewest points scored. Ramsey had to hustle that one off. Fair catch called for by Kozlowski at near midfield, and the Dolphins will have the ball at the 49-yard line, and they lead 14 to 7. We're in the early going of the second quarter. 32-yard punt by Ramsey. Hey, hey, what'd I tell you? Bobby Allison's favorite. Gentlemen, start your engine. Welcome to the It's all yours, and it's all mine. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Hitachi, a world leader in technology, presents... <laughs> quality, backed by the most aggressive research program in our history. You can hear the quality in Hitachi's compact disc player, a technological breakthrough in audio reproduction. Laser and disc come together for one of the purest sounds ever. Its computerized programmability is a work of magic. That's quality. That's Hitachi, a world leader in technology. It was a non-title bout, and Oscar Muniz won. Now they meet again, and Jeff Chandler's crown is at stake. Plus, the World Rhythmic Gymnastics Championship. ABC Wide World of Sports, Saturday. The Orange Bowl, and it sounds like a college gathering tonight. They're shouting defense. They were leading cheers while we were away. Short kick by Ramsey. He was under pressure, and the Dolphins have the ball at the 49-yard line. Strock on the night, 7 of 10. 84 yards already. He's thrown two touchdowns. He's matched what he did last week against Atlanta. Play action. Attempt to screen to Duper, and he somehow stays on his feet and gets yardage down to the 42-yard line. A gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Tripped up by Bobby Jackson. And Duper drawing ever closer to that magical 1,000-yard marker, which, strangely enough, with the great receivers the Dolphins have had, no one has ever cracked. The graphic was in error. It was not, of course, Wesley Walker, but Super Duper. Duper now needs 14 yards for his 1,000-yard season, and I'll echo what O.J. said. Think what would have happened if they'd used him much in the first five games. I would look for the uh, Dolphins to do some exotics here real soon to give their playoff opponents something to work against and think about. Good point. Third down, seven. Under zone, Nat Moore, intended receiver. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Panel 10, WPLG-TV Miami. Third down, long three now for the Dolphins. The ball at the 44-yard line or inside the 44-yard line of the Jets. Dolphins took their first possession. Got on the scoreboard quickly. It was Don Strock to Mark Duper from 29 yards out. Richard Todd came back, hit Freeman McNeil for 20 yards to tie it up at seven. And Don Strock a few moments ago hit David Overstreet in the end zone to make it 14-7 Miami. 11-48 remaining in the half. Third down, long three. So Strock will work from the shotgun. Gets it to Joe Rose, and Joe Rose trying to get the ball up there for first down yardage <laughs> in the arms of Lance Mel. <laughs> Terrell uh, Ray moving it back. They're going to mark it. Well, let's see. They're going to mark it. He got it, it looks as though he's going to get the yardage. You mentioned earlier, uh, yes. Howard, about them running that pattern uh, short. I think if Strzok would have waited a tad longer, he would have had the uh, necessary distance. Got it anyway. First down, 38-yard line now, the Jets. Well, you saw the protection Strzok is getting. Nobody near him. The Jets' offensive line 
has kept the Jets quarterback and kicker under pressure all evening. People pouring through there. He's only been sacked three times in the last eight games, so they've been doing a heck of a job up front. David Overstreet, and this time he turns uh -oh. the corner, and Overstreet running with much more confidence and authority than we saw earlier in the year. And he just exploded around that right side. And he gives you the feeling he may go all the way every time he gets the ball. And uh, when you have a back like that, you see what Freeman McNeil uh, has been able to do for the Jets offense, at least in, <laughs> in the last year, you know, before he got hurt this yeah, year. And frankly, what Shula has not had in years. I mean, he's had to play a different kind of offensive game. He's always been looking for a David Overstreet, who just picked up six yards. It'll bring up second down and four. Ball just short of the Jets' 32-yard line. Loading right through a hole in the middle was Franklin. And not the uh, not to overrate uh, what Overstreet is doing, but when you got a back that can get outside like that, the defense has to spread a little bit, and you can pop these these tight plays Look up the, the middle. Job Stevenson, who's going to the Pro Bowl, by the way, number 57, did. And Cooch did a pretty decent job coming around there, but he's been doing that for a decade or two. <laughs> yes. Bob Kuchenberg will be an alternate to the Pro Bowl. First down and 10, 26 yard line. We'll be talking with Don Chula, Terry Blair. Did an in-depth interview with him earlier in the week. We'll hear that at halftime. We'll run down the possibilities for playoffs and picked off. Down the sidelines. And Darrell Ray, roaming center field, came up with a strike pass that he just left up there a little too long. And so the Jets will get the ball back. Let's take a look at Darrell Ray. He was literally playing center field. And this is a play that he did often last year. Well, he this was is very effective all last year in just this vein. And once he gets the football, he has been habitually a great runner. He ran one back for a TD while pulling a hamstring in the playoffs against the Bengals. Now, actually, Ray was over there, double coverage with Duper. And Ray, who can really cover a lot of yardage, if you don't put a lot of something on it, Spock didn't, he hung it up. So what they have here is both receivers lined up on the same side of the field. You see Nat Moore went down the middle, but Ray playing center field came right across, made a nice catch and a nice run on it. He's he not had a bad year this year. He just has not made the big play that he made for them last year. By his standards and his abilities, he's not had a good year. He came from some 20 yards, and they're all right. Gets the ball back for the Jets. They trail 14 to 7. They have it at their own 43. Televideo personal computers equip the professional for success. Because Televideo's innovative design produces powerful, sensibly priced computers that communicate with one another and grow as rapidly as you do. Televideo, personal computers that equip you to attain that most coveted objective of business move. Televideo, personal computers. Get in. Mr. Post? Need some help? I'm your Bell Yellow Pages representative, here to help you. I'm in the Yellow Pages. Look at all those trees. Ten acres. We specialize in dwarf fruit trees. Say that in the Yellow Pages, where four out of five people let their fingers do the walking. That is helpful. Hi. This is Mrs. Post. I'm interested in all your fruit trees. Oh, you must have a big backyard. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Dwarf fruit trees. Let your fingers do the walking. The Playboy Mystique. It's been around for 30 years now. We'll look at its impact on Nightline tonight. I guess he wouldn't mind if we called him Pops. He came up a free agent from Notre Dame 14 years ago. He's been to the Pro Bowl about six times. He's both a guard and a tackle. Bob Duchenberg. The Jets have it. First down to 10. Their own 43-yard line. Freeman McNeil. And McNeil dances out over the 45-yard line for a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. Did Cooch sell his mansion yet? I heard that he did. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I bet he made a nice profit on it. He never fails to. More power. And he's, he hasn't even discussed retirement, has he? Why should he? He's, uh, again, an alternate in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Not that big anymore. Hey, maybe Jim can't come five. back. No, nope. we were told by our real estate agent he did not sell his mansion. Second down, seven. Todd is back. He underthrows Lamb Jones. 
And I'm going to reiterate something, Howard. This guy has not thrown the ball. Speaking of Todd, has not thrown the ball well downfield in a couple of weeks. I have not seen him throw. I watched the entire game against Pittsburgh last week. And this game, he has not Can't thrown one good ball downfield. One. Can't quarrel with that one. He had time. You notice him and grimacing. And he had his man free. He has a severely bruised thigh that he had to leave the Jets game against the That could be Pittsburgh. a factor tonight. In the However, third quarter last week. And it was really did not know whether he was going to be able to go tonight or not. Third down and seven. Kenny Lewis. Not that Lewis to midfield and just inside, but short of the first down. It'll bring up first down. And that will produce Chuck Ramsey once again. Jets seven and eight on the year. The Dolphins 11 and four and looking to win tonight to guarantee they'll get at least a divisional playoff advantage here. They wind up in a tie with the Raiders. They lose that one on a head to head because the Raiders beat them earlier in the year. Ramsey high but it doesn't turn over. Fair catch called for by Kozlowski to the 16 yard line. Good kick though. He wasn't rushed for a change. Just under eight minutes remaining in the second quarter. The Dolphins have it over the Jets, 14-7. Okay, guys, you're on your own. Here's to good friends. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Tonight is kind of special. Oh. Last one down by the lower brow. The beer will pour. We'll say something more somehow. So tell me, were you scared? Me too. <laughs> Did it be it's here, the first Nissan 300ZX, a technological marvel, computerized, digitalized, civilized. The new 300ZX, powered by a new turbocharged V6. This sports car is awesome. At your Datsun dealer. Frank Gifford, Howard Cosell, O.J. Simpson, we're in the Orange Bowl in Miami. We hope you're enjoying wherever you are. We know a lot of you are experiencing really bad weather throughout the country. We'll just put your toes up a little closer to the fire. Enjoy. The Jets and the Dolphins are getting it on, and the Dolphins have the lead 14 to 7. And they have a first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. With 749 remaining in the first half. And it's spin around. This is Overstreet. And Overstreet running strongly once again out over the 25-yard line, close to another Dolphin first down. Hey, he can move, O.J. Yes, he can. Dan Johnson does a good job on Ben Randolph turning him around. And you see Stevenson. Now, look at this. This is a center out there. That's... When's the last time you saw a center out in front of the ball carrier on a sweep? <laughs> yeah. They do a job. That's why he's in the Pro Bowl, and that's why the last Dolphins time are excited was on about reverse when, Ovestri uh, when uh, Stevenson rode Gastineau out, but Gastineau was able to give him enough of a battle so that the defense could read it and prevent it an effective game. Second down, less than a yard to go for the first. Franklin. He does the heavy headache. duty work, and he gets the first down up close to the 30-yard line. Dishing out a few headaches coming in there, you know? And Dwight Stevenson had to be in the middle of that. And, of course, another fine offensive lineman, Ed Newman. He's going to the Pro Bowl. He works right to the right of Dwight Stevenson. All in all, the Dolphins will have six going. Headed by Dan Marino, Mark Duper, Ed Newman, Dwight Stevenson, on defense, Doug Fetters, and Baumhauer. First down and 10. The ball right at the 30-yard line. Strzok. Good coverage out there by the Jets. John Woodring was underneath the coverage. And they had Bobby Jackson right behind the intended receiver, Mark Duper. They'll bring up second down and 10. Don Strzok has had 19 career starts, and he's won some big ones, passing at a little over 54% over those 10 years of those 19 starts. Came in a lot of games of relief. Final game of the regular season a year ago, came in, replaced 
Woodley, through seven of eight, got the Jets in, or Dolphins, in field goal position to win that game. They've been doing it for a long time. Second and ten, Nat Moore in motion. Draw play to Franklin and Red smartly. Gastineau. You can tell Gastineau is uh, thinking about last week because normally he would have been running upfield, rushing the pass on that. He came across the line, looked for the run, and made an excellent play on it. He's been listening. <laughs> Well, he's been run on. <laughs> I bet you Fred Dean is watching. We're going to see him Monday night. We have the 49ers and San Francisco 49ers because Gastineau has the lead in the league. It's 19 sacks, but Fred Dean has 17 and a half. And Betters is one behind that at 16. Third down long. We'll see the Dolphins from the shotgun. Gastineau is there quickly and forces Strzok to throw quickly to Nat Moore incomplete. Now that wasn't a sack, but that was the same thing as being a sack. And again, Strzok is pounded. That'll bring up fourth down and Roby comes back out for the Dolphins. Gastineau, and every time his name is mentioned on the PA system, <laughs> he gets a, a round of booze. They've been writing a lot about how much that better plays as a team person and as Gastineau. I question that. Gastineau is vitally important to this Jet defense and a great athlete and a great player. No matter what you feel about the dancing routine that he puts on after the sack. I would say he and Lance Mills all season long have been the one bright spot for this uh, Jet defense. Wow, Roby really unloaded. What a Kirk kick. Springs is back there. Went back from the 25 to the 10 to take it. And he's covered instantly. Good defensive play. Getting down there was Eddie Hill. But Reggie Roby unloads on a 58-yard effort. Back in the Orange Bowl in a moment. One computer company has been shaping the way business does business for 99 years, NCR. Today, NCR High Technology puts computer power where business needs it most. From the powerful NCR personal computer, Decision Mate 5, to the awesome power of the 9300, the world's first full 32-bit VLSI mainframe for business. NCR, shaping the way business does business. The Hilton's right across the street. We'll, well meet let's you. meet back at the Hilton at 8. Meet you at the Hilton at half. I'm over at the Hilton. Come over. Five minutes to get to the Hilton. I'm at the Hilton. Let's walk over to the Hilton. I'll meet you later at the Hilton. You know, the Hilton's got the best steak in town. See you at the Hilton. And you can reach me at the Hilton. Just call me at the Hilton. And we'll get down to your business right away. When American business hits the road, American business stops at Hilton. America's business address. First half, the Dolphins over the Jets, 14 to 7, first down of 10. The Jets, the ball at their own 17-yard line, and Todd is back. Gets good protection, gets it to Land Jones, and a good shot. Jones bobbles the ball, I think that's a free ball. Jones caught that ball, and the Dolphins have recovered. Ernie Rome didn't know what was going on. He was just looking at the ball. He looked like he was playing soccer there for a little while. Well, you and can't, it, can't it, pin that on Todd. That I was, was a perfect was an throw. excellent throw by Todd. But we'll take us. And we have that down. Freeman McNeil is slow getting up for the Jets. It's been that kind of year for the Jets. In fairness to all concerned take a look at Lamb Jones. As we said, he's been playing excellent ball here. Runs a turn in there. The ball is right on the money. He's trying to adjust it to put it away. Now watch Rome. Playing a little soccer. <laughs> get a couple more yards out of it. That's Freeman McNeil. The wrong way. Tried to get in on it. I don't think anyone hit Freeman McNeil. Must have twisted his leg. He appears to be all right. But the Dolphins have the ball back inside the 42-yard line of the Jets. You can't keep giving the Dolphins opportunity. You won't get many of them back. They're in the top three in the league once they get down. They don't turn it over very frequently, and they're the least penalized team in football. And they score. Scott licking his lips. Like he's looking at a yummy bone. 
hands it out to Dan Johnson, the tight end, a gain of about three yards on the play. It'll be a second down and seven. I mentioned in Monday night we'll be out in San Francisco. We'll be watching the 49ers in Dallas get it on, and then should the Giants knock off the Washington Redskins tomorrow in the nation's capital? What's that? Should the Giants knock off the Washington Redskins in the nation's capital? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought you said. Well, uh, anything could happen. Then, huh? The Dallas Cowboys could win that division with the win over the 49ers. All kinds of things can happen good for the 49ers. We'll talk about that at halftime. Second down and seven. Wide open is Johnson. Last smell. Slow getting out. And he takes Johnson out of bounds at the 26, but it's another Dolphin first down. Take a look at it from the ground level. Dan just ran a, a simple out from his tight end position, and someone didn't get out there to cover him, and he's been playing some good ball for him. He's been noted as a blocker, and he's catching the ball quite a bit this year. Johnson, we spotted him, Frank and I, in the Miami 38, Washington 7 preseason victory for the Dolphins. Johnson is a good receiver, and that's why uh, Don Juan Lamenda. Another first down for the Dolphins. Inside five minutes remaining in the first half. Matt Moore in motion. David Overstreet. Oh, almost. And Stays on his feet. It was Kenny Shroy up there from strong safety that tripped him up. And he falls forward for a gain of almost three to bring up second down and seven. Frank, you called Gastineau a team player just a couple of minutes ago. He was all the way across the field in pursuit on that play. I tell you, Mark is probably one of the better down linemen for against the run pursuing the ball. If he has a problem, he has a problem when they run the ball at him. Right at him. I would venture to say he could outrun 50% of the running backs in the league at 6'5 and 265. Second down, we'll call it seven. Overstreet, uh, case in point, to the 20 yard line. They hooked him uh, easily. Case in point about Gastineau, they hooked him very easily on that uh, play, and they, they were fortunate that Overstreet didn't get more yards out of that. And they'll mark it just inside the 20-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and three. Third three. Jam-packed Orange Bowl. Great tribute to this team. Bill Robbie, the owner, started the season with, I think, 20 unsigned players. He's down to one now. That is only David Woodley playing out his option, or at least it's in his option year. We got the players signed, and Shula has got them in the playoffs. That'll be an automatic first, a three down for Strzok, and he goes to Joe Rose, who gets the first down yardage to the 15-yard line. There's movement, I believe, Kenny Neal. Kenny Neal was right the in. guy. You're right. So, the reception and the... Penalty will add up to about the same thing. In any event, it'll be first down at 10, about the 15-yard line. Well, he got hit. Give him the catch. That's what we used to do in Buffalo. He paid for it. Let him have it. Old movement by Neal. Took Marty Lyons oh, with him. They didn't give him the catch. <laughs> they walk it off. First down and 10 Dolphins, 15-yard line. First down. Oh, there's a lot of guys out there. They're thinking about contract time, and when you go in there for your contracts, it's the stats that you have to put in front of them, and you, you hate to see those receptions taken away from a guy. Well, that would have been Joe Rose's 30th of the season. Dolphins, of course, play three tight ends. Hardy who had a big game against Atlanta a week ago. Rose and Johnson. You add up the receptions. They're right up there with the big tight ends in the league. Here comes Overstreet again and again. They do a number on Gastineau. I mean, simply, it's not like they have to double team him. They're really not having much trouble getting outside of uh, Gastineau. And I, I really don't understand a guy with his ability who gets hooked uh, somewhat easily. And Overstreet is inside the 10-yard line, down around the 8-yard line. He'll get about 8 yards out of that. And it appears they can work do that on, on every Got to teach him, got to keep working him every day in practice from the very beginning of the preseason training campaign. It's a matter of discipline. It's, it's purely a matter of discipline. All it is. 
That's the time remaining here in the first half. The Dolphins leaving 14 to 7. They're threatening. Scott, timing pattern, tries to get it to Duper. Incomplete. It'll bring up third down and three. Bobby Jackson back there playing it very well. He was inside position. Strzok had to throw it over the outstretched hands of Duper, who only stands 5'9". Third down. It's funny, you have a, an athlete on the field as good as the mark, and I don't want to pick him out. Normally, the only guys you can really leave alone are running backs. Everybody else have to work on that technique over and over and over, and uh, it's, I don't think it's more important anywhere on the field than in the offensive and defensive lines. Big play now for the Jets. Third down and three. And the Dolphins are noted for getting it in once they get inside the 20. There is Jet movement. And also Dolphin move. And now Strzok is going to be stopped. Bob Crable. And Strzok goes down all the way back at the 23-yard line. That'll bring out the field goal unit. There are no flags. You probably saw movement, but no flags were thrown. Yeah, Strzok at that time thought he was a thought he was a Theismann or or Joe Montana tried a little reverse on him. He just didn't have the feet for it. I knew he had, but he is not. What's interesting <laughs> is twice. And this is unusual for the Dolphins. They're in touchdown position. Once Ray picked the pass off, and now they're thrown back, and the best they can get is a field goal. Very get the two-minute warning up. before they'll have an opportunity to put up a 39-yard field goal attempt. We'll be back with that action. And right now, a message from the National Football League. Glad you could be a part of this. For his enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Mr. Sonny Jurgensen. Vince Lombardi and all the other... Never thought I would be here, but to, to be here in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's like coming home again. It's a dream when you come from North Carolina and, and a little school down there and then you play at Duke University, a team that really didn't throw the ball very much. Very fortunate to get in professional football. As an NFL quarterback, Sonny threw for over 30,000 yards. He's still ranked as the number one lifetime passer in the NFC. Vince Lombardi said of Sonny, the thing about Jurgensen is he always wanted to win so fiercely. All the great ones have that. Hall of Fame is a great place. I'm sure that uh, some young kid could come in here and look at these things and make a decision whether or not he would like to be a professional football player. This is where all those dreams come true in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. The preceding announcement brought to you by one of the best who ever played this game, Sonny Jurgensen in the National Football League. Hall of Famer, deservedly so. He had fun on the field and off. 39-yard field goal attempt. The Dolphins leading 14 to 7. Don Chalman, I told you about the sore leg that kept him from practicing during the week. Don Strzok will place it down. Kuchenberg is a snapper. Blocked. And the Jets will get it back. And when it looked like the Dolphins might go 14 up, the Jets get it back at 155, remaining in the half. That was one of the more casual block field goal attempts you'll ever see. <laughs> see if we can pick it up. Watch this. Watch Jerry Holmes, how casual he is about... Um, he didn't get the ball up. Oh, he, he did, no, he I didn't get it up. I mentioned a bad lay. He did not even start that ball up. Ball. He kicked Dwight Stevenson uh, yeah. right where it was smart. Or rather, Kuchenberg. I think he hit the center. For Von Schaumann, usually that's Let's a chippy. I think it hit Ed Newman here, right in the back. We'll see... A little late placement, but again, a weak effort. First down and 10, Todd is back. Out of the backfield is Kenny Lewis, and Kenny Lewis upended out over the 35-yard line. Jetson coming up from the cornerback, but there's a pickup of seven. I'm amazed that the Jets are only seven down because Miami usually, as I noted earlier, is very opportunistic getting the ball in. Hey, they better not take that kind of a tactic with the Raiders. A little more finesse would work a little better. 147 remaining in the game. The Jets have three timeouts, and the Dolphins have three timeouts. Quick snap by Todd. Trying to buy a little time. He doesn't buy enough, and down he goes. It is Bob Baumauer, his second sack of the night. And what the Jets might be doing, thinking too much about Doug Betters and 
They've got to worry about Bob Baumauer. That's his seventh sack of the year. Prob know. Probably the best nose, uh, nose defensive lineman in the league. And a strange size for it. He's 6'5". They're usually very squatty. Third down and nine. Todd Schuller short of the first down. He was up yes, close to it, but he stepped back, and they mark it at the 37, where it'll be fourth down. I know what you're thinking, Howard, and you're right, because he, he didn't run a slant pattern. He ran a hook pattern, so he did run the pattern short. And you run a slant pattern, and Not only that, quick. but as Frank noted in his call, he moved back. Here's Ramsey after catching the ball, and Clayton is dropped now to the Dolphins. Dangerous return man, this rookie from Louisville, who had such a great career there as a pass receiver. Inside one minute remaining, and depending upon where this ball winds up, it'll probably determine what the Dolphins plan to do. They have three timeouts remaining. Clayton falls forward and makes the fair catch at the 20-yard line with 36 seconds remaining in the half. A 43-yard punt by Chuck Ramsey. Coming up tomorrow, Wide World of Sports, you'll see it at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock Central Time. The WBA World Bantamweight Championship. Jeff Chandler against Oscar Munez, live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. They fought once before in a non-title battle in July, and Munez, the unknown challenger, won a 10-round split decision, giving Chandler his only professional loss. And you'll see that rematch again right here on ABC. They meet for the Bantamweight Championship of the World, and, of course, the beauty and the grace of the World Rhythmic Gymnastics Championships from France. Wide World of Sports tomorrow, right here on ABC. Reminder at halftime, in-depth chat with Don Chula, and a look at the possibilities, and they <laughs> are endless still in the NFL as to playoff possibilities. First down and 10, the Dolphins, near their own 20-yard line. I think we know pretty much what they're going to do. Andre Franklin over the left side, it's about six yards. And now Stock wants to call timeout with 26 seconds remaining here in the first half. It'll give us an opportunity to show you how we do some of the fancy things we do. I don't really understand it, but I know some of the names of it. You know when we see all those little numbers and names come on the bottom of your screen? Well, this is the computer room. The guys are given the names and numbers. They type it into the computer. Then it goes into what we call a character generator, or our character generators. And that comes up on the screen. Meanwhile, in our truck where our director and producer are sitting, our technical director is there. These are still the names and numbers being typed into the character generator. Now here's our truck. Now our TD tonight, Joe Chavo, just reaches forward, pushes one button when our producer Bob Goodrich or our director Jim Jeanette tells him to do so, and boom, you'll get it on the air like that. And if uh, it comes up wrong, you've got to blame Goodrich or the director, Jim Janek, for <laughs> telling Joey to push the wrong button. That is fascinating, isn't it? Remember, they have to roll the tape backwards all the time, and, and they had to edit with a magnifying glass technology, and you'll see so much of it in new use in the Olympics coming up, the Winter Olympics in February, and, of course, the Summer Olympics. Just unbelievable what's transpired in this business. I'm covering up for Joey Shavo. He's never made a mistake in his life. Once he thought he did, but he was wrong. Well, then we can talk about it. <laughs> We've got a second down and four for the Dolphins. They're down to two timeouts. 26 seconds remaining in the half, and they lead the Jets 14 to 7. Over straight. And he'll have the first down, and Strock will use another timeout. Mark Gastineau has left off from defensive left end to make the stop, and he draws some resounding boos, and now the Dolphins got down to one timeout. It's funny, I was thinking on the previous play with uh, so little time left before the half, why they didn't get the ball to a game breaker like Overstreet, but they just tried a little inside trap there, and if Overstreet could have got by the linebackers, it would have been interesting. I would think if they're thinking in terms of putting more points on the board, that maybe they would That'd be throwing something it. like the Big Ben, try and get the defensive penalty, and of course the half of the game cannot end on a defensive play. Let's pull a little gimmick play. Okay, AJ Jay. Dewey there. Yeah. Let's pull a little gimmick play. Let's use the old forward lateral that was so <laughs> successful. Remember the play in San Diego in the playoffs? It was, mm -hmm. They fired it out to the receiver, and he made the lateral off. I forgot who it was. Exactly. Tony Nathan. Tell you, Dallas used receiver. to run that play real well. He used to throw it to Preston Pearson all the time. Mm -hmm. Who was the receiver on that play? Remember, under. I think it was Nat Moore. Nat Moore. Stock hit Nat Moore on a little turn in right before the half. 
He flipped it out to Tony Nathan. Funny, we saw A.J. Dewey a second ago. He's been curiously quiet. The Jets have had no offense at all this period. Now we got Mark Duper. He's the speed for the Dolphins. He's split to Strock's left. Top of your screen is Matt Moore. Whoa! Oh, and Lance Mel again could have had an interception, and he might have got six points out of it. The boy is not meant for greatness. That's twice he could have broken out, tied or broken the NFL record. He could have tied the NFL record. the ball. Yeah, tied the record. He could have tied it and broke it tonight. I'm going to tell you oh, what. Interceptions by a linebacker. Well, he's uh, not happy about it, and I feel well. badly for him because this is a quality <laughs> player. Yep. There are a lot of coaches in this league, linebackers who blitz usually get the most attention. A good example, Lawrence Taylor, a truly great player. But, uh, but, and... Uh, Lance Mill. But, no, a lot of coaches look for a man's maintenance of position, his ability to be around the football. Mel is one of those who can do it. On second and ten, draw play, overstreet. Sprinting to stop the clock, which he does with si seven seconds remaining. Maintenance of position, coach. That's love right. It. You know what? He'll All get right, a you, chance, know, you know, you know who it is to that theory yeah. most. Your old coach, John McKay. He says yeah. this is what makes you green, a truly great linebacker. He said, if I want a linebacker to blitz, I, then I, I'll use him as a down lineman. That's not what I want linebackers for. Now, that's just McKay's thing. Yeah. Well, McKay and the Jets could use a linebacker to do something other than they did do it. They both <laughs> use a little more maintenance. <laughs> Third down and three. Seven seconds <laughs> remaining in the half. Got a point there. Overstreet. Now, if you look on the ground, and that's it for the first half. And the Dolphins could have had much more, but they don't. And they leave the Jets only by seven. We'll be back with our halftime highlights. And this is the moment. Nissan trucks are. This new 4x4 is proof of Nissan know-how. Head him towards the canyon. With the most powerful standard engine in its class and independent front suspension, tame the worst terrain. It's one tough hump. 4x4 Nissan style is major motion. Come alive, come and drive. Your Datsun dealer. Introducing one of the most amazing VCRs ever. The Sharp VC388. Open Sesame. Observe the detachable remote. No wires. Now, watch closely. With Sharp's double aspect forehead technology, you get picture perfect special effects. The Sharp VCR with stereo, every feature you can wish for. Now you see them. Now you don't. From Sharp Vines come Sharp Products. These days, everyone's got some kind of telephone deal for you. But how can I beat a deal like the AT&T phone right here in my home? Works great, rings true, not a lick of trouble. I called AT&T's toll-free number and found out I don't have to do anything to keep old reliable right here. I can keep on leasing it or buy it. You know? You may already have your hands on the best telephone deal in town. AT&T, we set the standards. Sunday, the coyote tries to outbox a desert rat. I just want to catch the guy. I don't want to die doing it. Mark Castle and McCormack. There. Who are you? Bond. James Bond. Sean Connery's back on top is the best Bond ever. Goldfinger. Evans and Company. Uh, one moment, Mr. Wilson. The new NEC portable computer. So powerful, it's a portable office. Ah, Mr. Wilson, they just brought me the forecast. Uh-huh. Well, financial planning is showing an increase in March. And, and, and word processing is amending the report. Tuesday, my secretary says fine. We got your account? Oh, thank you. The NEC professional portable. Desktop power for the man on the move. Marines that are home from Beirut are getting a pass. They'll be home for the holidays. And, of course, it's the last game of the season. The Dolphins and the Jets will go in the clubhouse right after the game on Eyewitness News. Channel 10, WPLG-TV Miami. They 
met earlier this year. Undefeated Jeff Chandler suffered the first defeat of his professional career. Unknown contender Oscar Muniz scored a sensational upset victory in the non-title bout. Now they meet again. Jeff Chandler takes on tough Oscar Muniz for the WBA World Bantamweight Championship. But forget the past. Now Chandler's crown is at stake. Plus a sport of precision and artistry. The World Championships in Rhythmic Gymnastics on ABC's Wide World of Sports Saturday. We're back live in the Orange Bowl. A score here in Miami at halftime. 14-7 Dolphins over the Jets. Tonight's halftime features are being brought to you by Merrill Lynch, a firm whose wide range of integrated financial services and commitment to the highest quality in each indeed makes them a breed apart. We will be back in just a moment, at which time we'll be picking up with Terry Blair's talk with Miami coach Don Shula. To some, the breakup of AT&T is a shattering event. But Merrill Lynch know-how can make it your lucky break. Our top-ranked research team studied AT&T from top to bottom. We can help you make the right move. Manage eight stocks, keep some, sell some, or move into our special AT&T stock fund. Now that opportunity is knocking, take advantage of a real break. Call Merrill Lynch a breed apart. The look of a winner. Don Shula has it. And he says the secret to his success as a head coach is being totally aware of what's happening on and off the field. That's helped him reach five Super Bowls, including one magic undefeated season of 17-0. Don Shula is more than just a good football coach. In fact, he is one of the elite coaches in the National Football League. His record is well known, and it certainly is proven all over the walls of his office here in Miami with all these plaques. But what is not well known is that Don Shula wanted to be a winner since he was a kid. Don, what were you like as a child? As a hard loser, a tough loser. Uh, it started in card games around the house, the grandparents and the parents, and. It went from there to pick up games in the playground, and I never liked to be on the losing end. And uh, I was a sore loser or a tough loser. And I think that that's helped me uh, become a winner, uh, hating uh, defeat, hating failure. Uh, by the same token, uh, I've been exposed to failure as a player and as a coach. And I don't dwell on failure. Uh, when it's over with, when I've cried my, <laughs> my eyes out, uh, I somehow then try to uh, uh, go back and pick up some things that happened in a negative experience and uh, hope that they'll help me the next time I have the opportunity to compete. One failure that's remained with Shula, the Super Bowl loss to the Jets in 1969. Shula's Baltimore Colts were heavily favored, but were upset 16-7 by Joe Namath and the Jets. It was a shock that eventually forced Shula to leave Baltimore for Miami. At the time, I, when, when the game was over, it was... Uh, just getting beat but as uh, things built up over a period of a week or two weeks or a month after the first team in the National Football League to lose to a team in the new league that became tougher and tougher to live with and it eventually came to the end of a relationship between uh, Carol Rosenblum who was the owner of the team at that time and myself life in the NFL began for Shula in 1951 with the Cleveland Browns a defensive back number 96 Shula wasn't physically overpowering, but he was smart, an intense worker, and had that enormous desire to win. Those are qualities that trademark Shula coach teams to this day. Traded to Baltimore and finally Washington, Shula never stopped working on the mental side of the game. I think as a player, I always uh, wanted to know what was happening around me. I wanted to be aware of what other people were doing and what the overall philosophy of the offense. I used to drive the coaches nuts. Uh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? How is it going to work here? And uh, they'd, uh, they'd just appease me and answer me and then try to get me out of there and go about their business. But I was always uh, trying to be aware of, of the entire situation. And I think that that has helped me going from a player to a coach because as a coach now you're responsible for the entire situation. You've got to know why you're doing it. You have to know the underlying philosophy. Shula 
understands his players and how to use their talents, and they understand him. For anyone who meets him comes away with the same feeling, that what you see is what you get. He's an honest, totally straightforward man, and his players trust him because of that. The important thing is credibility and communication, I think, in coaching. If I had to pick out the two most important things in coaching and leadership, I would pick out credibility. You have to have credibility with the people that you're responsible for. The minute that they doubt what you stand for or what you're saying, you lose credibility. You're not going to be able to lead if you lose credibility. And then communication is the next most important thing, or maybe just as important. You always have to have dialogue. You have to have communication. You have to listen. You have to be able to uh, pick up new ideas. And uh, you always leave the door open. Uh, my door is open for the players to walk in here at any time and uh, they can sit down here and discuss things. They might not like what I, what I say to them, but they always are going to have the opportunity to walk in that door and face me and, and find out what I'm thinking and why I'm thinking that. Our first company picnic wasn't much. Two bags of chips and a six-pack. But things change, because we give our customers a good job for a good price. Call it good business, like this Meisterbrow. Sure, I can pick any beer now. But Meisterbrow tastes every bit as good as Budweiser. And it doesn't cost as much, so there's no contest. Hey, any of you overpaid, underworked people want a beer? Introducing Meisterbrow. Tastes as good as Budweiser at a better price. Saturday on T.J. Hooker, a baby breaks their hearts, a drug ring could break them. Then, on the love boat, an inspector with a nose for murder has suspects from stem to stern. Happy holiday! And Perry Como comes home to celebrate the most wonderful time of the year. With special guest Michelle Lee, together they sweeten up the Big Apple. Perry Como's Christmas in New York. Tomorrow. We're back live in the Orange Bowl. Halftime score, Miami dominating thus far. 14, the Jets 7. Now what we promised you. A look, team by team, in both conferences on playoff possibilities. Beginning in the NFC with the Niners. Niners can make the playoffs if either the Packers, the Rams, or the Lions lose, or the Niners defeat the Cowboys in our game Monday night. Detroit, the Lions will win the NFC Central if the Bears defeat the Pack this Sunday or the Lions defeat the Tampa Bay Bucks. But the Lions cannot be a wild card team. Soon you'll need a psychiatrist's couch to keep up with this. The Saints will be a wild card team if they defeat the Rams. The Saints cannot win the NFC West. The Rams will make the playoffs if the Rams defeat the Saints and the Packers, Lions, or Niners lose. And the Packers will make the playoffs. This is the last NFC team if they can defeat the Bears on Sunday and the Bucks defeat the Lions or the Rams defeat the Saints. Now, in the AFC, we begin with Seattle. The Seahawks will be the wild card if they can defeat the Patriots this weekend. But the Pats can be the wild card if the Pats defeat the Seahawks and the Steelers defeat the Browns. Pats might also clinch if Patriots, Browns, and Bills all win. At the same time, Browns could be the wild card team if the Browns defeat the Steelers and the Pats defeat the Seahawks and the Falcons defeat the Bills. The Browns might also clinch if the Pats, Browns, and Bills all win. And if the good Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, the Bills can be the wild card if the Bills defeat the Falcons and the Steelers defeat the Browns and the Patriots tie the Seahawks. Lots of luck, Buffalo. The playoff possibilities for all of you to be utterly confounded. We'll be right back. Thursday, Auto Man turns on Las Vegas, where the key to a kidnapping is in a casino computer. Get him. I was hoping you'd try something like this. Auto Man. Then. She's willing to serve her country. Average Americans are off to Amsterdam, where a master spy wants a million in diamonds. In the to upset the balance of power. Masquerade. Thursday, all starting at 870 Central and Mountain. Halftime winding down. The rains have stayed away tonight. The field relatively dry, very dry, as a matter of fact, considering the rain that we've had over the past 24 hours. As you can see, Miami is on top of the Jets 14-7. The Dolphins looking for that home field advantage. I'll remind you once again, 
14 years. They have won over 80% of their games on this field. We'll be back. The numbers for Richard Todd in the first half. And the numbers for Don Strock really are not that much better. Don Strock, 11 of 20, 110 yards. A couple of touchdowns, however. And one interception for Strock. And there is Dan Marino, unable to play. Damaged that knee a couple of weeks ago, but he's moving around, and he should be available for the playoff activities. You know, Howard, listening to you discuss the playoff possibilities, I couldn't help but wonder who's on third. Uh, but Buffalo <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Buffalo, Buffalo needs a tie. <laughs> they need somebody to tie. Kirk Springs is deep along with Preston Brown. As we begin the second half, 14-7, to the Dolphins over the Jets. And this will be Preston Brown from the five. Uh, looking to get outside, and he does, but he's hammered at the 21-yard line. Let's take a look at the numbers, the first quarter, and then we'll hold them over and show you the halftime. All right, as we noted earlier in the first quarter, stats were relatively equal. Two-minute uh, possession edge for Miami and a close ball game. But by halftime, an impressive edge for Miami in first downs, in rushing yards, in total yards, turnovers equal, but an impressive edge for Miami in possession time, too. Frank. We open with the same personnel as we did the game. Todd, a quarterback, McNeil and Durking are the setbacks. Todd fires out. Schuler gets a gain of five out over the 25 to the 26 yard line. Lyle Blackwood takes him out of bounds. It'll be second down and five. We have yet to see a ball even thrown to Wesley Walker tonight. I was just Richard thinking Todd. that, Howard. I was just thinking Wesley must feel a little like I felt when I first came into the league, running clear out pattern so that the tight ends can run underneath him. That's what he just did. Yep. Yes. Slip to the left. The two tight ends are in. Walker's been out of the game much in the first half as it's just a with the two tight end offense. Here is McNeil. Gain of a couple that'll bring up third down and three. Tried to snake his way in his fashion, but no place to snake. Well, I mentioned uh, when the Jets played New Orleans, the Jets seem this year seem to be a, a, an offense that they really don't have a personality. You know, they, they're bread and butter play. Some teams say, well, we're going to run off tackle. That's what we do best, and that's what we're going to go to when, when times get tough. And uh, they they seem to be a team that, that's in a little disarray offensively, philosophy-wise. Third down and three. Richard Todd, this is Kenny Lewis, and he doesn't handle the ball. That's incomplete. The Jets will be forced to punt. Kenny Lewis was thinking first down before he had his hands on it. And that will bring out Chuck Ramsey for the punt. And we'll watch Mark Clayton drop for the Dolphins. Pretty depressing for Todd. And a depressing season for this man, former teammate of mine, Joe Walton. Told by everybody that's going to go to the Super Bowl this year. He's trying to be 500 tonight. Ramsey gets one to turn over. It's high. And Clayton does not make a fair catch call at the 30-yard line. And he's hit hard by Davlin Mullen. A 41-yard punt by Chuck Ramsey. But nevertheless, the Dolphins have the ball at their own 30-yard line for their first possession here in the second half. And we'll see Don Strock coming out. We told you his numbers. He was uh, 11 of 20, 110 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and interception. He calls his own plays, by the way. And I mentioned that earlier. Don Chula says he's the most knowledgeable quarterback he's ever had. And he did not exclude Bob Greasy from that. Are you serious? I'm serious. First and 10. The Dolphins, the 30-yard line. Strock is back, dumps it to the tight end, Dan Johnson, and Johnson has got it for a first down. Lance Mel and Bob Crable defensively there, and the crowd thought they were a little aggressive, but the crowd is really stoked up tonight. Nice throw right over the middle. He had Johnson him in mind all the way, too. He was not looking left or right. Mel is limping. They were going to send in a replacement, but no. 
They had Ron Crosby ready, but Mel stays in the lineup. Johnson got the first down at the 41. Franklin. Gastineau this time fended off the block and forced Franklin very wide and Franklin just did get to the line of scrimmage. Now we get the specialty changes. A couple of extra defensive backs for the Jets. And we'll see some offensive changes for the Dolphins. We'll see Woody Bennett, I think, for the first time tonight. Number 34 is in there with Tony Nathan. That's an interesting graphic. Dolphins winning every game this year, which they've led at half. And the Jets. Second down and ten. Nathan, and Nathan thought about cutting back. He might have got a lot more out of it had he done it. Had he been able to do that when he saw it, but he doesn't. And he's a little late with it. He only gets three. It'll be third down and seven. Well, As Dandy Don pointed out a few weeks ago, he who hesitates his loss really applies to the running back, and he hesitated a little that time. And Still, he spun away from Ben Rudolph for an extra two or three yards. Need a 10, though. Though they have another shot. Third and six. Ball at their own 44-yard line. So Scott will work from the shotgun. Not too good there on third down. Getting any better. Harris won to Joe Rose. Throws it behind him, and that ball also had a lot of heat on it. That'll bring up fourth down, so the Dolphins will have to punt. And Strzok, who hadn't played really since last year, was a holdout during all during training camp, signed the day the season began this year, and came in last week and did such a marvelous job against Atlanta. Well, they have troubles with the Jets' defense tonight. They've always had one like him. Earl Morrow did the job for him off the bench and for them off the bench. And... Roby, another uh, towering uh, punt, and this crowd loves it. Uh, this time it carries into the end <laughs> oh, Wow. I do believe that was higher than the Orange Bowl. 55-yard punt. Nevertheless, it's a touchback, and the Jets will have it at their own I do 20. believe. I'll tell you, trying to get cultured isn't easy. We just went to the opera, and we didn't understand a word. Yeah, but that big guy in those tights sure could sing. Well, at least we still drink a very civilized beer. Light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. But us impresarios drink it because it's less filling. We can't afford to get filled up. Tomorrow night, we're going to the ballet. Yeah, I sure hope they do it in English. Me too. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Radio Shack believes a computer for your family is an important investment. That's why you owe it to them to see the sale price color computer, too. Widely used in schools and homes, it's expandable with quality peripherals and supported by a vast library of software for education, home management, communications, and games. The color computer, too, at $80 off is backed by our national service and training. Only at Radio Shack, your electronic store for over 60 years. The Cowboys tangle with the 49ers on ABC's Monday Night Football. We saw Lance Mell, the linebacker for the Jets, limping a while ago, and now he's having a little ice applied to his right ankle. The number one curse from a player who's not going to the playoff is to get hurt in the last game of the season. First down and 10 the Jets. They trail 14-7, to the Miami Dolphins. Freeman McNeil. Reckless running out over the 25-yard line for a gain of six. He ran the ball on that play, unlike the, the Jets have been playing all year. They played like that. Well, the Jets have... Arnsbacher has totally choked off the Jets' offense. He did it in their first game this year. He did it in the playoff game last year. And they just... It's as if Arnsbacher knows what the Jets are going to do before they even do it. Well, Arnsberg has done that to a lot of teams, Howard. Jets have got themselves a real problem now. Bingham, who had been in for Joe Fields, their fine center, who's been out for four weeks. Guy Bingham. He is out. Pellegrini comes in. Pellegrini playing center. He's not familiar with that spot. Second and four. Durking. And Durking. Good extra effort. He's up close to a first down. I Over think the 30. They finally got one. A first down. 
Joe Fields has missed the last three games, so he's also missing tonight with a sprained foot. And they had been using Guy Bingham there, who's doing a creditable job. McElroy had moved to left guard, so they've had to do some shuffling in the lineup now with Bingham going to the sidelines. First down and 10, the Jets. To Todd, looking for Walker, and a little more, and it would have been six. William Judson was there. Finally, we saw a throw to Walker. Judson apparently tipped it. Didn't you think, Frank? I think he might have. Richard had to hurry it for one thing. He was under pressure as he's been all night. Now that was a good deep throw under terrible pressure. That was a, a fine play action pass. Judson just yeah, he got, got in on yeah, him. Well, could have been a little four further out. I mean, Judson has turned into a superb beat. defensive back. Into the night with six interceptions. Picked off three in the Jets' first game, and that was when he really came to the four. Of course, their regular starter has been out for the season, Don McNeil, over that left cornerback with a knee injury training camp. We got a second down at 10, Freeman right. McNeil. McNeil tried to hurdle by Glenn Blackwood. He does not do so. And that will bring up third down. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Channel 10, WPLG TV, Miami. Hope you're enjoying tonight's game. The Miami Dolphins want the home field advantage. They won over 80% of the games that they have played over 14 years here. They'd like to play all of them. They could do so if they win tonight. And should the Raiders lose to the Chargers on Sunday, they would be home field throughout the entire playoffs. But they can guarantee themselves at least the divisional playoffs with a win tonight. Third down and four, Kenny Lewis. This time, Lewis holds on and gets the first down, lowers his head, booms up to the 44-yard line before Ernie Rohn drops him there. First down, Jets. Well, I tell you, someone must have given this uh, Jet offense a pep talk on the sideline because they are playing pretty fired up ball right now. They've shown a little uh, well, emotion. Well, they've two little... first downs, which yeah, is more they... than the consecutively, which is more than they were able to do in the entire second quarter. But if you watch them play, they look like they're, they're for the first time tonight, they're just going after people. and. Uh, Hey, somebody must have said something. Right? They, they, they lit a fire under them or something. They look fired up. First down and 10. The Jets at their 44-yard line. Play action by Richard Todd. Trying to get it to Freeman McNeil. Kozlowski is angry with himself. The flag comes down now. And Klecko moved out there to have a word. Or rather, it was Big Marvin Powell and Kozlowski. Well, Todd sort of looked up there. That was a ball that shouldn't have been thrown, at least to this person, as you can see. He's got plenty of time, and no one's open. Crawling pass defense against Kozlowski. Let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> crawling all over him. So the Jets get another first down at the 48-yard line, their own 48. Richard again went to the man with the double coverage. And he had the tight end downfield. Being hooked up. For Schiller, and off his fingertips. Well, normally, when you, normally when you run that pattern, they want you to run about a yard or two from the sideline, and Schiller was a little more on the field, and uh, Todd hung it up about a yard from the sideline, so it's tough to tell from here if Schuler ran, a, ran the proper pattern or the ball was just too far outside. Juice. This is what we were talking about before. In his last three games against Miami, look at Wesley Walker. Two receptions for nine yards. So the Dolphins have put the lid on Walker. Freeman McNeil. And McNeil running like a William Andrews on that you. one. And he's to the 45-yard line. He gets eight out of that. It'll bring up third down and three. Hey, they've been sleepwalking around here, and uh, someone must have said, hey, look, we've done nothing up to now, and we're in the game. Because these guys are fired up. They, they want to score here. I'm last just looking at Klecko's neck, and next to him, Joe Fields. It was last year's Pro Bowl center. They've lost him now for four weeks, and we understand that Bingham with a sprained knee will not be back tonight. So Pellegrini will work at center. Next 
does not win games for you. <laughs> Joe Flacco's neck can win games for you. I'll tell you. Oh, this year it hasn't. Well, it's won some. We're five on the season. Third and three. Oh, All right. Underneath, and Kenny Lewis holds on. And Lewis down to the 22-yard line in the arms of Lyle Blackwood. The Jets started at their 20. The four first downs in a row, one on a penalty. The best sustained offense by the Jets tonight. 7.55. I tell you Remaining what, Lewis. in the third quarter. See Lewis, he loops over the middle. Little delay, wide open, fumble the ball a little bit. Pretty good move there. I'll tell you, McNeil's running has been a very important part of this drive. Right, and don't forget it. They're blocking up front. 22-yard line, first down. Top of your screen is Lamb Jones. Westy Walker's to the right. Now they work themselves back on the same Whoa. side. And that Over had to be a concern with the yep. problems they've had at centers. And Richard Todd gets back on it. Lucky to recover. But with Pellegrini in there, it was overdue. A little earlier, you might have noticed that I didn't get a chance to mention it, but Pellegrini was late on a snap. And that's tough on your offensive line, when, but you can understand it. Let's take a look here. It's really difficult to tell whose fault it is. He never, never did have control, have control of the ball. Tough to, tough to break in center when they're playing an odd man line. They're playing big Bob Barmour right over Pellegrini's nose. Even if you're from Harvard. Yeah. Second down and 11, there was a loss of one. Got him. Todd, man, is wide open, and it is Schuller, Schuller once again. And Schuller down to the five-yard line. Will be first down, goal to go. And the Jets have come out fired up here in the second half. This is the best drive they've engineered against Miami in their last three games, which includes this game. But there's a tough guy, Schuller. Uh, he got hit a couple of shots in the first half. We didn't think he was going to be back. And he's been a spark on this drive. First and goal. Walker's foot left. And now Lamb Jones are moving to the slot up at the top of your screen. Jimmy McNeil, that's the pass. Touchdown. Good call. He goes to Marion Barber. That's what they did in the playoffs last year. Barber coming out of the backfield as though he were going to lead the sweep for McNeil. Stepped in behind the defensive unit that was coming up to turn the sweep inside. He was wide open. So suddenly from nowhere the Jets have come alive. Very nice pass. First pass for Freeman in a regular season game, but as noted, he pulled the same play for a TD in the playoffs last year. Bingham a snap. Ryan is the holder. A little late. And Ryan may be able to get it in. No? Yep. Yes, yes, he does. A great effort. What an effort. By the holder, that ball was snapped really high. It was Pellegrini. He was forced to snap. I misled you when I said Bingham. Of course, he's out of the lineup. But Pellegrini, I'm sure, is not snapped on a punt or a place kick. And it was rather obvious as he put it up high. Ryan knew that he couldn't get it down. It would have been a block and a super effort by Pat Ryan. So we got a yes, ball sir. game. Yes, we do. Ryan surprised me. He has this much speed. I had an opportunity to watch him play last week. He wanted to throw it, but there was no, no people downfield. They were all blocking. Ryan gets his first NFL point. And it ties the game at 14, 644 remaining in the third quarter. If you're just looking for a small car, your choice is very large. But if you're looking for a small car with advanced front-wheel drive engineering, your choice is more limited. And if you're looking for a small car that's also very sporty and maneuverable, you'll find it reassuring to look at this one. Skyhawk, the first car to succeed at being both small and Buick at the same time. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? In the Army, you learn about helicopters from the ground up. Check the gyros, Brian. I'm on it, sir. But you don't really learn a skill until you've learned to use it under pressure. Beep. 
That's it, Fry. That's what I'm here for, sir. Let me say something here. Pellegrini, OJ, is taking a primary course <laughs> of snapping. That's Jim Ringo there teaching him. Taught the electric company. I want to congratulate all those guys. It's been 10 years, and we're still hanging in there. Fellas? Leahy booms it away. Holden Walker is deep. He'll keep it in the end zone for the touchback, and the Dolphins will work from their 20-yard line. There's Barber. Came out of the backfield and got the touchdown. We'll bring him McNeil, and we'll be right back. Given a choice between learning computing and playing video games, which do you think a kid would choose? Exactly. That's why Zortec, a new learning game, was created exclusively for Commodore home computers. As kids play Zortec, they're really finding their way around a computer keyboard and mastering basic computer programming. So before you buy a computer for your kids to learn on, make sure it's one they'll want to learn on, one that plays Zortec and other famous learning games. A Commodore home computer. I crushed a lot of quarterbacks in my day, and I'm real sorry. So I wrote this letter. <clears throat> Dear quarterbacks, I apologize for the way I treated you. <laughs> Please let me buy you a light beer from Miller. Light's my beer because it tastes great. I'm sure it's yours, too, because you little guys can't afford to get filled up. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. Sincerely, Elsie Greenwood. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Happy Perry Como's Christmas in New York with guest star Michelle Lee Saturday. Happy Happy well, I guess everything they say about Ford is true. They're sucking up the oranges and the grapefruit here at the jam-packed Orange Bowl. Meanwhile, live action. The Dolphins now tied at 14, 637 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Strzok is back. Got him. Beautiful show to out of the backfield. David Overstreet running a good pattern to Strzok. Eased the right in between two Jet defenders. And more than that, he had to wait for the final second for Overstreet to uncover. But he had the protection. We'll see from the end zone as a play-action pass. Overstreet just ran out of the backfield, outran the linebacker, and he's serving notice. I'm telling you, if this kid continues to play throughout the playoffs the way he's played tonight, the Dolphins will be tough. You're They'll right be that anyway. That. Right between Woodring and Jackson. But what beautiful protection for Strzok. First down is at the 40-yard line of the Dolphins. Strzok. That was Gaston. Arm was hit. Arm Gaston. Was hit Gaston reaching around. Almost had his 20th sack. He's had a tough night tonight against the run, but he's been putting a lot of pressure on him. On the passes, he, here he goes. Working against Laxo, a Laxo. good uh, blocker. Just not strong enough, Laxo, on that play. That'll bring up second down and 10. Stock now, 13 to 24, 141 yards, one interception, a pair of touchdowns. Jets showing blitz, and then they drop out of it. Tony Nathan. And Nathan with about an eight-yard pickup. Great up. Up to the 48-yard line. Perfect. And there is a jet that is slow getting up. Kenny Stroy, I believe. Coming up defensively, and he is slow getting up right in front of the bench though. Overstreet gives you that impression that he can go all the way every time he has the ball. He was floating there. He wasn't was running Nathan. hard, looking for a place to go. Was that Nathan? Yes. Oh, it's I'm going They'll be working on Kenny Stroy. We'll come back and be third down a two for Miami. People think I always take the train because I'm afraid of flying. Me? Afraid of that? I take the train because it's the best way to enjoy light beer from Miller. Rolling through the Rockies and all across the Midwest, Nice, less filling, and it tastes great coast to coast. That's why I take the train, not because I'm scared of anything. Hey, what happened to the light? Light beer from Miller. What's Everything you always here? wanted in a hey, beer, and less. <laughs> Baby, I'm a little afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Nine, nine. The battle between the chef no, no, no. and the baker. Nine, nine. 
has been going on for centuries. Until the sharp carousel convection microwave oven brought them together. As a microwave, it's better for fish and casseroles. As a convection oven, it's better for cakes and pies. And the sharp carousel turns the food so you don't have to. For perfect, even cooking every time. The sharp carousel convection microwave oven. From sharp minds come sharp products. It was a non-title bout, and Oscar Mooney's won. Now they meet again, and Jeff Chandler's crown is at stake. Plus, the World Rhythmic Gymnastics Championship. ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday. They continue to work on Kenny Shroy on the sidelines. They're going to give him a little extra tape. Of course, all the players are required to tape their ankles before each game, but they're going to give Kenny Shroy a little extra effort. Now Kirk Springs has come in from Shroy. And the Jet defense is looking at the Dolphins facing a third down and two. Hardy in motion. Nathan, good, strong running. First down, just inside Jet territory. John Woodring defensively there for the Jets. He made the execution, but Crable slowed up Nathan, did a good job on it. Well, they needed to, and they got it. So it was a successful play. Yeah, that's a good combination they have going now. Tony Nathan, Don Shula knows full well what he can do. He had the great year in 81, injured much of last year. He's had a great season this year. Over 50 receptions, over 650 yards rushing. But now they have Overstreet to go with that into the playoffs. On first down, and Strzok will go down. That will be a sack. The sack will go to Marty Lyons. Whistle had blown even as Strzok tried to deliver the ball. Jets playing the Dolphins tough tonight. The Jets playing for nothing but personal pride. And as they said, this is the beginning of next year. They're also trying to have an 8-8 eight eight season. The Dolphins is much more important. Home field advantage. And they can assure themselves of the divisional playoff game with home field advantage with a win tonight. And they could, with an upset by the Chargers over the Raiders on Sunday, they could have the home field advantage with a win tonight right through the playoffs. Second down, 16. Nathan. Oh. Good running by Nathan. He's up to the Jets' 40-yard line, short of the first down, but only by about a foot. 15-yard pickup, Kirk Springs made the saving tackle. Yes, and if Super Duper would have went after someone, he had a chance of breaking that when he wanted to cut back, but Duper was in his way, and du the corner was right behind Duper. He had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And in the flip to Nathan, the ball appeared to be unsurely handled. That was the interesting was, yeah. part of the play. I, I think it was a snap from center. He didn't have it. He didn't have control of the ball. I mentioned that 81 season of Nathan when he had... Nearly 800 yards rushing and 50 receptions. He's up close to that again this year. Yeah, when you average four and a half yards a carry, you've got something to do with the ball. Yeah. Third down, one. Woody Bennett. Oh. Now he won't get it. No, nope, he didn't get it. Good defensive surge there. And now decision time for Don Schulich. I would think you'd go for it. Now in most cases, I'd criticize a... I hear guys saying square their, square their shoulders to the line of scrimmage. Now, but that was the case where Bennett should have turned his shoulders upfield and tried to go, you know, upfield and get the first down. He was going towards the sidelines when he was hit. And on fourth down, less than a yard, you saw our referee, Gene Barth, indicating how much, about a foot, maybe a little more. The Dolphins will go. Kenny Shroy back in the lineup for the Jets. A strong safety. And well, comes Kirk Springs. You saw fourth down plays turn the tide of that Dallas game, Dallas Washington game last week. Woody Bennett stays in. He's the big man as they line up in the eye formation. Now they get into a pro set show yardage. Nathan, first down, almost popped it. To the 37 yard line, first down Dolphins. They don't make many mistakes. Oh, one of the reasons Ed Newman is going to the Pro Bowl on that play. He does get out there, doesn't he? At one point, I thought he was off sides. <laughs> he was really mm -hmm. coming out of there. Looked like he moved him. Well, he didn't look as if he moved early. He just had a jump out there. He was flying. Nathan, 41 yards. Tough yards they've been on eight carries. Overstreet now into the lineup again once again. Ball batted away by Woodring. The 
That'll bring up second down and 10. And away lucky on that. Woodring was in an intercept position. Yes, he was. Hey, Strock has had three of them now that could have been picked off. Two by Mel and one there by Woodring. Set linebackers, Mel and Woodring and Crable playing some good games tonight. Yeah, I know Mel. I, I hope he gets an opportunity at another interception because he's going to spend oh, the whole offseason thinking about, about the two he didn't get in the rest of his life. <laughs> he could have broken an NFL record for interception by linebacker tonight. Had his hands on two of them. Blitz for Strock. He reads it. Fires to Johnson. Flag is down as Johnson gets about six. Troy made the stop. Flag on the play. Jets were in a full blitz. And they were a little early. Team mistake. There's a gain of about six, so the penalty will keep the down a first down. If we look at what's coming your way tomorrow here in college football, so I'm sure they'll take the penalty. Western Carolina 11 and 2, Southern Illinois 11 and 1. The Division 1 AA championship, you'll see it right here, 1 30 tomorrow afternoon. Lined up in a neutral zone, still second down. This game appears to be coming a, a, a game that is a personal, you know, nobody's going anywhere. I mean, Miami has a chance maybe to get the home field advantage, but I don't think anybody out there now is thinking about the playoffs, the home field advantage of going home. This, is, this game's become personal. These guys are going after each other. Not just a chance. They can get it with a win tonight, at least through the divisional playoffs. I think it's important to them, OJ. Second and five. Down goes Strzok. And this time, the sack is by number 78. That's Barry Bennett from the Viking and New Orleans Saint, who came last year to the Jets. Well, we saw a nice thing there. As I said, I didn't, I, I didn't mean to intimate that it wasn't important to Miami. It's just that the Jets seem to be taking this game uh, seriously now. These guys are out here playing well, hard ball. playing with spirit, yes, with motivation, are. a fire yeah. they haven't yeah. shown during much of the season. I think, frankly, apparently, they've been embarrassed. They really have. Everybody told them how good they were at the beginning of the year, and that everybody said they had were going to the Super Bowl, and maybe they just weren't that good. But in whatever event, they, I think they've just been embarrassed by the season. Third down and 14. Scott. Nathan. Nathan gets a bunch of it back inside the 35-yard line. And we'll see Uwe von Schaman, who is kicking with a very sore leg. And he showed it the last time he tried a field goal. Certainly did. He didn't get it more than two or three feet off the ground. That was a 39-yard effort. And this will be about a 49-yard effort. When the Dolphins won 32 to 14, Marino wasn't in there, was he, Frank? Yes, he was. That was a big game for him. Well, was that the difference then? 49-yard attempt. Plenty of distance and plenty of accuracy. So Ron Shaman comes to breaks the tie, put the Dolphins on top 17 to 14. 49-yard field goal. They love it here in Dolphin land. We'll be back in a moment. In Television presents, You Make the Call. Craig Morton throws a lateral pass to wide receiver Rick Upchurch, who tries to pass downfield, but is hit in the head while in the act of passing. Now, You Make the Call. Is this roughing? One video game system has the most going for it. It plays the most games, the best-selling games. In Television 2 and the new System Changer, plus new arcade games like Bump and Jump. If you can't bump them, you've got to jump them. Masters of the Universe with Super Graphics. You're He-Man, the most powerful human in the universe. But what you're up against is not human. Bump and Jump and Masters of the Universe. New for In Television 2. It's got the most going for it. What call did you make? Anytime any player is hit in the head, it is considered unnecessary roughness, so roughing is the correct call. I think they'll win. Dan Marino, leading the AFC, ended the night in passing, elected to the Pro Bowl as the starting quarterback. No rookie has ever been in that position since the Pro Bowl began since 1950. 
could mean a Super Bowl for this team. One minute and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ron Shaman punches one. Gets a lot of distance. Carries Preston Brown deep into the end zone where Brown takes the touchback. Before the game, in my talk with Bill Onsbarger, I noted his success against the Jets. I asked him about that very thing. It's about time, because there was a few years before that that uh, we didn't, we weren't that successful. Uh, I remember one game we went down and it was the last play of the game. Uh, they were able to beat our coverage and uh, win. So uh, it's about time it's turned around, and I hope it continues to turn around. But uh, I always enjoy playing against the Jets because they give you a lot of problems. I think. Uh, uh, Coach Walton has done a good job in conceiving their offense. Uh, they've had some problems, but uh, they still give you a lot of problems when you look at it like I do defensively in uh, attacking the Jet offense. And Bill Arnsparger's A.J. Dewey attacked it rather well. He makes the stop for a loss of about three yards on Freeman McNeil. One of the few times we heard from A.J. tonight. Interesting observation, Juice, yes. He has not been the factor in this ball game. He was in the playoff game last year or anything like it. Not up to this point. Well, they had him line up in the inside backer and he had his man on coverage. Did a good job. Came up as a rookie. What was he, a first round draft pick and his co-rookie of the year as a defensive end. And Art Fargo, who always moving people around, moved into linebacker a couple of years ago. Second down, 14. McNeil in a lot of trouble. Down goes McNeil, and Brzezinski was the defensive man. Oh, this is Kim Bocamper. Kim Bocamper making the stop. Now the Dolphins appear to be the ones getting fired up. This is a big series because they can wind up again with field position. But down to 35 seconds remaining in this, the third quarter. Well, many in the past, many of the Dolphins' big offensive explosions have come off the defense playing inspired ball. Ooh, so the army started for him. Third down, long yardage for Richard Todd. Quick snap. Keep it on the ground. And Kenny Lewis. Oh, nice move. Ooh, and Lewis <laughs> hurtling over the top. Just pasted at the very height of his hurdle. That was a back jumping, not thinking about running. He didn't, he didn't think he'd come down running. He was leaning back when he jumped. Final seconds taking off here in the third quarter. And the Dolphins have a 17 to 14 lead. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl after this message from our stations. Wednesday, it's a night to remember. Oh, Alex, it's good to see you. With good news and bad blood. If you go behind my back once more. On Dynasty. Then the holiday spirit takes a new turn. It's the St. Gregory I'm gonna break. When greed takes control on hotel. Wednesday. This is a news brief from Channel 10 Eyewitness News. Hello, I'm Mike Schneider. In the news tonight, four Marines back from Lebanon. They're heading home to South Florida for the holidays right at this hour. When they get here, their loved ones will finally get their long-awaited reunion and we'll have a night beat report. A shaky ceasefire is holding in the Mideast tonight. We'll tell you about that. Some excellent news about our economy. This could be the best news about wholesale prices in 20 years. But no good news in Dallas. The weather is miserable there. A big snowstorm. We'll tell you all about it after the ball game. Fresh taste of the Rockies, 12 at a time, from Coors, all the way to you. The best of the Rockies is yours. Jordash fragrance for men. Jordash fragrance for women. Because love is all you need for Christmas. Channel 10, WPLG TV, Miami. Richard Todd's numbers, first, second, and third downs. Meanwhile, the Jets are faced with a fourth down. Ramsey is on. Mark Clayton has dropped for the Dolphins. They could get good field position out of that. Clayton has positioned himself at his own 38-yard line. Ramsey puts it up high. Fair catch called for and executed at the 39 by Clayton. Blackwood is taken from the field, by the way, the safety for the Dolphins. He is going to have an ankle x-ray. We'd like to remind you once again, Monday night, 
City by the Bay. Dallas and San Francisco. Dallas, of course, will be watching the Giants and the Redskins tomorrow. Giants taking it to the Redskins in the nation's capital. Hey, Howard, anything can happen in that game. I, I recall when the Redskins went to the Super Bowl in 72, the Bills had won three games. The last game of the season, we went into Washington and we beat them. So anything can happen. How many yards rushing do you have, 300? <laughs> no, not quite that many. First and 10, the Dolphins. They lead by three as we begin the fourth quarter. I'm listening. <laughs> Stock under pressure, but he gets it to Johnson, the tight end. Gain of seven out of the 45 to the 47. I was interested in the Jets' last call on third down before the punt. Inside their own 20, seven and eight season. And in a couple of hours, they'll be winging homeward, the season over. And they were playing to keep the game close. They call well, I would have thrown it. I agree yeah. with you, Howard. I think I would have thrown it. But hey, we're up here. Second down and three. Franklin. Oh, it's a little opening. Knew what he needed for the first down. He gets it at midfield. Lovely that was a, cutback. Yeah, that was a Franco Harris run. That's yeah, Franco lovely does. Lovely cutback. <laughs> All right, let's look at the stats beginning with halftime. That's when the Dolphins had taken a pronounced edge, as you can readily witness, and had the ball about twice the time the Jets had had the ball. And in the third quarter, when the Jets began to put things together, total yardage narrowed measurably, passing yardage, the edge went to the Jets. Miami still much better on the ground, and eight minutes more of possession time, or thereabouts. First and 10, the Dolphins at the 49-yard line of the Jets. Richard Todd into the night, 24 interceptions. Only Lynn Dickey of the Packers had more through 15 games. Franklin. Matt Smell was there first. You know how it is. I sit here and think about that last call. You know, the last time the Jets had the ball. Hey, the coach is playing like it's a regular game, and, and, and he's not playing like that going home. So maybe he did do the right thing. The score is 17 to 14. So, you know, now that I think about it, uh, he may be playing. You know, seriously, he may be playing like it's a regular game. I'll tell you, those are meaningful discussions. A lot of it in football, college, and pro, and kind of show business. But not with Bill Arnsparger. This man is a very serious man, and those folks pay attention to him. Second down, long yardage, almost 10. Franklin got maybe a half a yard. <laughs> I tried, Howard. <laughs> Stock, Cooper, and Cooper goes over 1,000 yards for the Dolphins. All right, super duper. First time they've ever had a receiver to do so, and now a flag is oh, thrown not at this moment. Gary Holmes and Cooper. Oh, that's just plain stupid. Off. Yeah, don't do it now. No. From, Man just went over a thousand from yards. From what I saw, record. Jerry Holmes was the miscreant there and just plain unnecessary. But, but he threw the punch. That's what the officials see. It was Duper that threw the punch. I just hope they let him calm down and let the kids stay in the game. It's quite a night for him and not to not to get kicked out of a game the night after you break. They were the into it the previous play. They almost squared off in the previous play. You throw a punch at a helmet. I got in one fight against a guy named Mel Lunsford. I jumped up, threw a punch at him, and the punch was With already the thrown. Yeah, the punch was already thrown when I realized he was 260 pounds. Yeah, I was about to say, if it was Mel Lunsford with the Patriots. It's a little late before you, you've got a that. mismatch. <laughs> With unnecessary roughness, offsetting foul. 85 defense, Good. 47 out. You can just reverse that. Yes, it was 85 offense and Duper 47 on the night, defense. Four receptions, 72 yards. He's over 1,000 for the season. The new Dolphin record. And watch for yourself, who was the instigator. I tell you, it's a credit to the players in the league. They voted this kid to the Pro Bowl. There's so many big-name receivers around the league. And people like Rod Martin and Duper, the new guys, they get a chance. Right him, Cowboy. First down and 10, the Dolphins. They're at the 33-yard line of the Jets. Franklin spinning and twisting and getting additional yardage to the 30-yard line. He'll get three out of that. He got four tackling there. Yep, he got amazing yardage out of that. 
hasn't had the year he had last year. He's been a little hurt. He's been running. He says his shoulders hasn't. He's had a couple of shoulder injuries, and they haven't really bothered him that much. It was a thought of the of the injuries that's been holding him back. But he got like it in the Orleans around. game, and he hurt both shoulders in the same play. Rounding up, uh, he's coming in shape at the right time of the year, though. It's playoff time. There he is, Andrew Franklin. He was a real surprise. They got him in the second round out of Nebraska a couple of years ago, and he was basically a blocking back there. He's had two, now three great years. Second down and seven. Whistle it blown. Mm. Duper and Troy facing each other once again. Saw Duper drop the ball. It's funny. I, I recall back those 10 years ago. Yeah, right after a I five yard penalty for delay now against Miami. Right after. Well, here we delay go. Delay of game. Number 10 offense. Right after I broke the record, the next carry I fumbled the ball. Duper. Saw Duper. Seeing Duper drop that ball reminded me of it. And he's got it tucked away now, Mark Duper. And all the great receivers they've had here. And he has produced the most yardage in a single season. More than Paul Warfield. Huh. That's saying something. Overstreet. All right. I tell you. Down the sidelines, David Overstreet will get another Dolphin first down. And there's a flag flying. And it looks like he might come up with a late hit on it. It certainly looked it. Ed Newman again with a big block out in front of this dude. Watch number 64 yep. if we big pick Newman him up. Coming around. There there he is. Disciplined team, the Jets, Beautiful with their constant penalties all year long. Great anticipation by Over Street and complete Look at that. Complete confidence in his offensive line because he turned up assuming the block would be made. The block was made and his anticipation really got him the yards. Overstreet now up to 63 yards. I think they're going to call that on Darrell Ray. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. 28 defense. First down. Well, with the penalty, the Dolphins have a first down goal to go at the nine-yard line. Still 11.50 to go here in the fourth quarter, and the Dolphins leading 17 to 14 and threatening. Kirk Springs has come in now, replacing Darrell Ray. Joe Walton said that he wanted to see Kirk Springs at the safety position in that secondary where he's going to lose a couple of people this year. Troy dueling over there with Matt Moore on the timing shot from Don Scott. Troy played that very well. If there were any interference there, it would have been on offense. And will bring up second down goal to go. Good Jerry Holmes there giving a few uh, signs to the fans. <laughs> It was actually Jerry signal. Holmes on the coverage. I'll correct myself. Yes, it was. Jerry right. Holmes is uh, <laughs> yeah. also somebody that is one of the Jets going to the USFL. He signed with Pittsburgh. Second down goal to go. Overstreet. And he breaks loose from Lance Mel who does manage to trip him up. But again, good running by Overstreet. He's to just about the six-yard line, where it'll be third down, goal to go. Don Woodring was over to, the, to make sure of what it is. You're right. Very poor attack. Well, you know, yeah, I like that Overstreet. I like the way he runs. You know, when your great runners run like uh, jet pilots, how uh, they fly. They got to fly miles ahead, and he's not dealing with the guy right in front of him. He's looking at the guy downfield. The guy in front of him is handled. He's looking at those safeties and guys. It's hard to differentiate, but differentiate sometimes between good running and bad tackling. <laughs> yep. Some guys like Earl Campbell create poor tackling. Flag is down. The Jets were moving. Scott will have a free one. And it's incomplete. And it's it was really hammered there. Another key jet mistake. <laughs> oh, boy. Hit a guy when he's out of bounds. is arguing rather vehemently with the official. I don't know why. Probably told him he lined up offsides. I think when they hit the guy out of bounds, it could be a little frustration, you know? 
frustration of the whole season. Defense number 73, offside, still third down. Down remains the same, but just a little closer. Third down, goal to go near the three yard line. We got to admire Klecos and the Gastonos and all. Well, all of them. They played well tonight. They played a very hot team. Dolphins have won their last four in a row, seven of their last eight. The Jets are down by three, and we're in the fourth quarter. And the Jets really are going no place but home. Well, these guys have played their hearts out. Stop. Incomplete, and a flag is down. Intended for Joe Rose. Against the Jets. And it's going to work against the Dolphins. Oh. Offensive pass interference. Let's take I'll a look at it in there. See it. I think it was Rose spinning off Mel. Yeah, they may have said he pushed off. There it is. Defense, number 80 offense, penalty refused, fourth down. Actually, Grable had him covered pretty well. So the Dolphins are going to have to settle for three points. And as we look down on the field for Dolphin fans, Wow Blackwood has trotted back to the Miami Dolphins bench, so apparently his ankle is all right. Whether we'll see him again tonight, I don't know. Von Schama with a 21-yard field goal attempt. Gutenberg will snap it back, stop and put it down. And Von Schama will put it through. So the Dolphins lead now is six. Buick Century makes very generous use of the latest technology to offer a front-wheel drive automobile that's beautiful and aerodynamic, smooth and quiet. And the Century also utilizes a sophisticated computer system to monitor many functions. But what really makes the Century a Buick is that it not only comes with a computer, it's also available with an impressive amount of software. Very impressive. Would you over the years, us guys in Light Beer from Miller have had a lot of laughs, but this time we'd like to share some personal sentiments. Boo? Have a very, very Christmas. Yeah, and a happy new year, too. Yeah. And this holiday, may there be bass under all your lily pads. May all your pockets be full. Feliz Navidad. Peace. We wish you everything you always wanted in a Christmas. And more. You know, I'm glad they asked me to do this commercial. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. The Cowboys tangle with the 49ers on ABC's Monday Night Football. John Strock, who works as a golf professional, I think over Doral in the offseason. What a plus he has been. Came off the bench a week ago and was sensational against Atlanta a week ago. He's having trouble, however, when they get down close against the Jets tonight. They move the ball well up and down the middle of the field. However, 10.44 remaining in the game, and they have but a six-point lead over the Jets. Four times. One stop by a Darrell Ray interception. Another, they had to go for a field goal. That was blocked. Four kick by Von Schaumann, aiding. And then two settlements for field goals. So it's a ball game. Preston Brown is deep for the Jets. And this one, Von Schaumann will have to Ooh. kick again. Now back him up five yards, he'll kick from the 30. Frank, Juice hearts are heavy in the football world today because a terribly gallant young man of the New York football giants, Doug Cota, passed away. Most of you are familiar with the story, a malignant brain tumor, and I use the word gallant, that's just what he was. He fought with everything he had before finally succumbing. And then to John Merritt, the head coach of Tennessee State. Marvelous man, marvelous coach. Died last night, heart seizure. He's the man who coached such as Ed Tutal Jones, the great defensive back, Lem Barney of the Lions, and Speedy Duncan. Our hearts are heavy, too, here in the booth for those two great gentlemen and their families. 
Never forget Doug Corder running that sweep against Buffalo that Monday night game. Upset the Buffalo Bills. Good little running back. They don't come along like him very often. We'll kick again from the 30. Brown is deep along with Springs. Ten thirty-eight remaining in the game. In a game where neither offense has scintillated. Brown from the five-yard line. Oh, and he has hit just at the 22 and gets forward to the 23-yard line. As special teams, Miami's have played superbly well on kickoffs throughout the night. As we suspected, the x-rays on Lyle Blackwood's ankle were negative, but he will not be back this evening. Got to feel sorry for old Preston Brown. He came into the game, uh, he, was, he was ranked fourth. In, uh, in the NFL and kickoff returns, if he could have bust one tonight, he possibly could have won that title. They've done a super job on him tonight. First down and 10, the Jets at their own 23-yard line. Freeman McNeil, single setback. And he'll try the right side. He runs into Betters and Brzezinski, one of the toughest linebackers around against the run, number 59. Really upset down here about him not making the Pro Bowl. He's had a great year. Uh, but it's like Lance Mail. There's just so many good linebackers in this league. I certainly agree with the choice of Chip Banks. Of oh, Cleveland. yeah. Had a remarkable year. And Ted Hendricks is going back. And Ted. Ted will be playing at least 45. <laughs> he might be already. <laughs> Second down and eight. There's a pair that's been playing tonight. Clucko and Gastineau. It's a Todd. Oh. Picked off That's by it. Zosky. That's it. Works in traffic, he should get in. Zosky takes it into the end zone. I'm not so sure there wasn't a mix-up on that play. I don't know. He had a man behind Kozlowski. He tried to loop it over him. It was a poorly thrown ball. It was just a poorly thrown ball. It was picked off. And this game is turning into a rout. Richard spun out away from the center. It looked as if there was some kind of confusion. He had a guard with him. That's what leads me to believe that it, it was a design play. Let's take a look at it. From the end zone here. Oh, yeah. See, he had a guard coming out there with him. So the play was designed. It was just he tried to loop it over his head, and he no. just didn't get enough on the ball. He shouldn't have thrown it. No, he shouldn't have thrown it because... He was almost triple covered, yeah. the intended receiver. Von Jarman for the conversion. Well, when you're down, you try to make something happen. And now the crowd loves it. They breathe a collective sigh of relief as the Dolphins are on top now, 27-14. You'll never finish by morning. No problem. Now, command the powers of Adam with professional keyboard, high-speed memory drive, and built-in word processor program, all in one package. Oops, you gotta start over. Relax, Adam. Do that paragraph. <laughs> Is that legal? And print. Adam, even a letter quality daisy wheel printer. You did it! Adam, my launch sequence. Is that legal? Command the powers of Adam and program your future. Suave Bola is more than wine. Who should know better than Franco Bola? There's more, more. From Sierra Franco. There's more, so much more. There's more than wine in a bottle of Bola. Love makes people happy. Suave Bola, crisp, dry, and something more. There's more than wine in a bottle of Bola. The most positive thing you can say is that he's in pretty good company. It's a doubtful honor. Well, let's don't forget uh, New Orleans a few weeks ago. We are in a similar situation. And the Jets came back from being two touchdowns down and won the football game. They certainly did. Kurt Springs running a 76-yard punt back for a touchdown. Howard falling right off the stool. I'm trying, <laughs> coach. About to fall off again. <laughs> Ron Schaumann to kick off. Springs and Preston Brown as they were a few moments ago, or deep. Here comes Preston. 
And press oh, and a fumble. To the 24-yard line, the ball's loose. Love the way they immediately, on each side, point the finger at their <laughs> way. Yeah, everybody wants to be Mindy Rudolph, you know? <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, he pulls out there. Oh, nice yeah. fake. <laughs> And he just didn't quite have the touch he, he would like to have to get the ball over Kozlowski's head. First and 10, the Jets. They trail 27-14. A little more than nine minutes remaining in the game and the season for the Jets. Todd yeah. Durking. And Durking will get about five out of that. And Miami will give you that short pass all day long. It's a great crowd tonight. They are really having themselves a ball. They got a little tied up a while ago. We're a little quiet when the Dolphins had to settle for the three-pointer. But when they came back with the interception for the touchdown, they've loosened up once again. You would think this would be a good time to get some of those backup quarterbacks to look see. So that Pat Ryan play last week, his stats weren't impressive, but they dropped a lot of his passes. He, he threw the ball real well. Second down and six. Todd, Kozlowski once again. I think That's we'll sad. see Pat Ryan real soon. That is really sad. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, you don't think he's got two weeks to celebrate for the first playoff game for these Dolphins. Who did that two weeks ago for Atlanta? Can't call the man the line now. That's really sad. 43-yard touchdown return, and... I know this man. He's very sensitive. Yeah, that's, that's to hurt a, a lot. bad trick to have uh, in the uh, playing quarterback in the NFL. It's hard to tell. It was a mix-up with his receiver there. Ties an NFL record for touchdowns on interceptions in one game. All right, Howard. Who did he tie? Meredith. <laughs> no, that was Todd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donald. <laughs> Ron Shaman. Did that turn out the lights? Now? They're exhausting Where Ron Shaman here in the fourth quarter. Incidentally, if I knew who he tied, I would tell you, <laughs> public. <laughs> We're going to get one of those Univac mines down there. It's going to tell us in a moment. We showed you all that fancy equipment. They're down there just humming away, trying to come up with it. <laughs> Who's an ISO? He's just playing it for He's nice the extra zone. back in there, reading Richard's eyes. Dropped back 10 yards, and what do you know? Moved over. Nice catch. You think he Nothing could leave that? Hey, he did what Lance Mill had an opportunity to do tonight. Picked off two. 11 in the Orange Bowl. This old place is 46 years old, and it's rocking tonight. A Christmas gift from Radio Shack. We get the kids some terrific gifts at Radio Shack. Four exciting, safe, battery-powered toys. A sturdy fire chief's helmet with flashing light and sirens. And three authentically styled vehicles. Easily programmed for six different driving maneuvers, including straight, zigzag, circle, or square. Those toys sure got their attention. They still have more packages turn around. Exciting battery-powered toys. $6.99 and $7.99 each. Only at Radio Shack. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Are you tough enough to make it with the U.S. Army? Chevy trucks are. The Army contracted for 53,000 tough, full-size Chevy pickups and blazers. These rugged four-wheel drives are regular production vehicles powered by the proven 6.2-liter diesel V8. Need a truck as tough as the U.S. Army's? Just sign up at your Chevy dealers today. And now, take delivery of any new full-size pickup and make no monthly payments till March 1st. As a 1976 Olympic silver medalist and 1982 overall World Cup champion, Bill Koch has only one challenge left, Olympic gold. Just wait. Kozlowski has tied 13 other players. Who have intercepted two balls and taken it back to touchdowns. We'll give you the, the rundown shortly. Preston Brown. Just didn't want to throw him in when he hasn't had any work. The Todd does all the work during the week. But what, I mean, has he, has he, how much is. has he played this year? First round draft pick out of Cal Davis. There and he is. He was a holdout in training camp. It didn't get the work there. 
Freeman McNeil. Oh, one guy that hadn't given up was Freeman McNeil. Still running the ball hard. You would think they would have given this chance guy a, I mean, a chance to throw the ball a few times. There he is, Ken O'Brien. Great numbers coming out of Cal Davis. A bit of a shock to Those Jet fans, good. but not to anyone who followed this game. He was sensational out there. Not only is a quarterback throwing the ball, he ran the ball well. He's very mobile. As some are. Second down and five. McNeil once again. Mm -hmm. And this time he is hammered at the line of scrimmage. He might have got a yard out of it. It'll be third down and three. And we'll tell you, our telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. I'll tell you, the Jets are lucky Hans Bog is going to LSU. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, those two runs in a, a row is... Uh, Kind of meant to throw in the towel. towel in. I'll tell you, one of the 13 guys, Anderson, your friend Frank, in that Monday night game when he had the four intercepts, returned two for touchdowns. Fumble. Todd lost to pulling away from the center. You talk about a great safety. You talk about Dick Anderson. And that'll bring up fourth down. Tag me a few times. Oh, that was some defensive backfield. 25 Foley, 45 Curtis Johnson, 13 was who? Oh, Dick Scott. Uh-huh. And number four. Curtis Johnson. Dick Anderson. Oh, Dick Anderson. Did you, know, did you mention Curtis, Curtis Johnson? Oh, I'm sorry. I blew that. Come on, Howard. Name this, the 13 guys who have two interceptions. This, don't don't, don't ask him to add it up. You know everything. What? Don't ask him to add it up. <laughs> well, I uh, thought that's you were about nice. to <laughs> I added it up wrong also, you know. <laughs> Fourth down, Ramsey uh, to punt. Ramsey had to hurry that one off the side of his foot. Fair catch called for. Handled rather nifty by Glenn Blackwood. So the Dolphins in good field position once again with 6.40 on the clock, and they are looking at other <laughs> good-looking possibilities for home field, at least through the divisional playoffs. Began back in July for the Jets. Hot summer day, and it's winding up in Miami tonight. Yep, and it began auspiciously in the regular season with a 41-29 victory over San Diego. On first down, Overstreet. Oh. Steps inside of one tackler, gets a couple of yards, stops the clock with 6.34 remaining in the game and at the Jets' 47-yard line. And immediately after that, losses to New England and Seattle. And it's been basically downhill all year. And what you're seeing tonight is the disintegration of a team that last year was one game away from the Super Bowl and is still not an old team. They should have been peaking in their prime. Instead, this. Second down and eight. It's Franklin and Overstreet. Dolphins are thinking about working on the clock now. The thing about the Jets, if you think about it, all season long, no one seems, seems to have an answer as to what's wrong with the team. And I don't know what they expect to find in the offseason if they can't figure it out now. Um, somebody's got to come up with some answers. One would think. Third down and four. Players seem to be confused. Four. About the problems of the team, that is. Strock from the shotgun. No flag. The Jet got back. This is Tony Nathan. Nathan will be short of the first down as he gets to the Jets' 41-yard line. It'll be fourth down and two. Rusty Gilbo made the stop for the Jets. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. Channel 10, WPLG-TV, Miami. Fourth down for the Miami Dolphins. They lead the Jets 34 to 14. Jets had it close until the Dolphins, Kozlowski, picked off two Richard Todd passes in a matter of minutes and ran them in for touchdowns. The season will be over for the Jets, and the Dolphins will have one leg up on home field advantage. Well, we're looking at Roby. He'd like to get this ball in the end zone. As we said, he's after a team record here. Oh, he's hit a beautiful punt. He gets it so high, and this one takes a Dolphin bounce. <laughs> the four-yard line. 
Well, he's had a spectacular night. Reggie Roby, a sixth-round draft pick out of Iowa. That was only a 36-yard punt, but the Jets will be right on the shadow of the goalpost. I bet he had mixed emotions about that, because as we said, he's trying, well, with that average for the night, he'll continue. He will <laughs> have the Jets. Yeah, he will have the Jets, uh, I mean, the uh, Dolphin record for season punt average. I'll tell you, this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Buick. For comfort, reliability, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, see the 84 Buicks now. And by light beer for Miller, everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Richard Todd stays in the lineup. He's throwing his 26th interception of the season. And big pileup over the left side. Gain of a couple of yards by Scott Durkin. Well, it's apparent the Jets are trying to run out the clock, too. It's been a long season for them. They'll need this offseason to sort out whatever problems. So they try to find. Wesley Walker, who did not have a reception tonight. That's Great unbelievable. Off he didn't have one last week either. Second down and eight. Todd. Well, Walker. Yeah, I think he heard you. Well, we got that straightened out. And Walker gets out of bounds with the first down out over the 15-yard line. Well, Wesley's had a good year. That's his 61st reception. Wesley Walker is a great football player. There's got to be something wrong. <laughs> when you're within five minutes of the termination of the game, and he has one reception. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of time. Two games. First down, Jets. Dolphins movement, and a flag is down. Richard will have a free one. Gets it to Scott Durking. And Durking getting low to the ground because that's where he's built as the first down yardage. Bob Baumauer in the middle of the Dolphin line has moved into the neutral zone. All right, we've got all the wires working. 73 out. defense, offside, penalty refused. Show you the record that Kozlowski tied. There's a bunch of them, and it goes back a long way. Two touchdown interceptions in a single game. Miller Farr, huh? Oh, yeah. He oh, was Mel a great Farr's brother. One. How about Jerry Norton? That's the That's hammer you put me, good. folks. <laughs> There's Kozlowski. Kenny Johnson of Atlanta. He did it about three weeks ago. That's, That's correct. <laughs> Look at Ken Houston. And they were almost identical break. to this return on the other side of the field. Harris. Okay, we'll turn him out. Juice will sing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a duet here, Alex. <laughs> Not on second down. Freeman McNeil out of the backfield. Boy, he can move, can he? I think he surprises him a little bit. Oh, he, he ran so around. Stocky. Doesn't look like he can fly. He ran away fly. from Kozlowski and Mark Brown, the rookie from Purdue. Once again, you see he lined up. Uh, you saw that he lined up behind the quarterback. He just did a little swing out of the backfield. And uh, I would make mention that they, they've thrown a lot of these passes uh, throughout the year. I'm surprised at this point of the game if they're going to throw why they're not throwing downfield. Well, they are dropping off about 25 and 30 yeah, yards now. Now they, now they the are. Miami now, defense. Now they are. Frank's right about that. Yeah, this but it's been the trend of the whole game to throw well, this. true. 60, 50 backs are in there. Now you can't do it. Todd with a good shot fires it complete goes to Gaffney Jerry Gaffney will have another jet first down around the 35 yard line a lot of new folks in there defensively now yeah, but Derek well, Gaffney's is. not new he's a sticky fingered receiver I said there are a lot of new defensive players oh. in there for the Dolphins oh correction well let's see who do you think Miami is going to have to get ready for how huh? Johnny Hector, single setback now for the Jets on first down at Miami's 36-yard line. Good defensive play. Well, that one's out of the way. If, if Seattle wins, it, it appears that Miami will have to play the wild card team, whoever wins the wild card game, because all three uh, wild card teams will be from the Western Conference, and the Raiders can't play one of those guys. However it winds up, they'll be playing the Raiders, in my opinion, and we had that game in the Coliseum. And the Raiders have historically not had much problem, problems with the, uh, the Dolphins. Especially when Stabler waffled the ball to Clarence Davis that beat Shula in the final mm. seconds. Jets have a second down and 10.
It's a dot. Trying to get it to Derek Gaffney once again. It's incomplete. Glenn Blackwood is looking for the interception. Uh, poor pass anyway, a little high. He is not, I don't know if it's, his, if it's that thigh injury or what, but he has not thrown the ball well downfield the last few weeks. The last few weeks that I've uh, watched. I think he made that. Well, hey. <laughs> I have a right to do what you do sometimes. <laughs> I get to labor a few points. <laughs> I learn from the best. Stop. Uh, you're making Frank happy. <laughs> Third down and ten. Oh, that was nice. And Jones, and he loses it once him. again. And this time, the Dolphins keep it in bounds. Glenn Backwood, twice denied. Lamb Jones has made good receptions, only to cough it up. Paul Lankford got it out of there for the Dolphins, and Glenn Blackwood covered it. Fortunately, the game wasn't on the line here because Lamb Jones has had an excellent year. He should have a good offseason. Nice catch there. He did this earlier in the game. He just... Seem to have a little problem putting the ball away. Must, must have something to do with them gloves he's wearing. It's not cold out here. I can't imagine why he's wearing gloves. We've got a first down and ten now for the Dolphins. They can work on the ticker, which shows three <laughs> minutes and three seconds. Bud Grant would have had those gloves off, I bet. The Dolphins are going to wind up 12 and four on the season. Yeah, why would he wear gloves? It's got to be 65, 70 degrees here. Well, maybe it's hot down here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Under Franklin. Gets a couple. Ben Rudolph is in there defensively for the Jets. Third round pick from a couple of years ago. Rudolph out of Long Beach State. So Don Strzok is going to record another victory. And it's going to be interesting to see what the Dolphins consider. And with Marino's knee apparently going to be okay for the playoffs which will begin for them in a couple of weeks second down and eight overstreet he's had a big night and he puts some more yardage on the, the chart board as he gets another first down killing the clock at 216 at the 40 yard line you know, if he'd have cut back that time, he looked like he could have had a real big run. And I'm surprised he wasn't thinking about cutting back because with the game uh... on first down, Todd is back. Off the fingertips of Durking. It'll be second down and 10. Well, sad thing to see. The way it ended for this team. And once again, Monday night, we'll be in San Francisco. The Dallas Cowboys, hopefully, bouncing back from what happened to them against the Redskins. They were thumped. They go against the 49ers. All kinds of possibilities for the 49ers. Howard interpreted all that for you at halftime. Todd got it in there. Schuler didn't handle it. And we'll get the two-minute warning. Two minute once again. Well, I call the Dolphins a finesse team, which basically they have been. But have you noticed how much harder they've been hitting in this game and against Atlanta than usual? They are coming up to these playoffs in fine form. They really are coming into it in great shape. And they have two weeks to prepare. And they've got that great plus, too, of having a Don Strzok that can come in, relieving the AFC's leading passer and young Dan Marino and performing in a third down and ten. Richard Todd fires one that Glenn Blackwood made a diving attempt for the interception at the 32-yard line. Fourth down coming up for the Jets. Yeah, could have a shoulder. Gaffney split up to the top of the screen. And that could be how the season will end for Richard Cox. It's Bowser on the sack, along with Mike Charles, the outstanding oh. rookie from Syracuse. And that you see, through the ball, and Mike Charles does a, what he calls his levitation dance. He says whenever he gets a sack, he's going to rise and make 
make the quarterback rise up with a levitation move of his. And Todd and lost he just himself. Did. And Todd it's, lost the frustration of the season. It's just a sad way for a professional football team to end the season. There's no other way to put it because this yeah, game has... Especially in light, Howard, of his teammates doing his dance. Yeah. He has to know all the time now. I mean, who are the Jets to get upset? Watch 71. He'll do his levitation oh, dance here. No, Todd is emotionally broken yeah, I down. Look at that. That's his levitation. Yeah. <laughs> I might have thought Oh, and look at myself. this. Can you believe this? He gets pushed to the box, back, hit with the ball. Oh, they should go talk to their defensive player, Gastineau, there if they can't handle another team doing well, it. Well, it's more than that. It's I know what it is, Howard, but it's but still, hey, you reap what you sow. All right, I like that. Turnabout, fair play. So let's go. <laughs> okay, we're getting out. really deep in the late hours. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, but this is I know, a yeah, professional I... football team. So undisciplined. So they're going to be so embarrassed and ashamed of themselves. Uh, 117 yards of penalties on the Jets. Both. And the levitation dance, huh? Hey. Maybe you got to be able to take it, you know? You go two seasons watching your guy do it. I wonder season. what Bobby Lane would have done. Somebody would have levitated, danced over him. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have threw the ball at the back of his hill, but he'd have turned around and got in the front of the hill. You're right about that. <laughs> Second and eight. Oh. <laughs> Seconds ticking off. Now the final minute. Stock will watch the 30-second clock tick down. Hands off to Overstreet. Overstreet this time, fighting to stay in bounds. Good running by Overstreet. Yeah, sure is. Once again, not the best tackling, but hey, the Dolphins, boy. They went to the Super Bowl last year, and uh, despite a few, you know, loss of personnel on defense, I think they're a better team this year, especially when Marino is in there. They just appear to be a much more solid team. Now, again, Howard touched on it earlier. They have been really known around the league as more of a finesse team, although they have some pretty heavy hitters when you think of Brzezinski and when you think of Bob Baumauer. And the tough teams, the really battling teams, and the brutal teams, if you will, the Redskins and the Raiders. And they're down the line, but the Dolphins are thinking a Super Bowl once again this year. Final seconds ticking away. The Dolphins will go 12-4. They'll have home field advantage for at least the divisional playoff. They'll wait for the Raiders and Chargers on Sunday to find out about the rest of the game. Kozlowski, two touchdown interceptions. Once again, our final score, 34-14, Miami over the Jets. Tonight on Nightline with Ted Koppel, the Playboy Mystique has been around now for 30 years. Just what kind of impact has it made on American values? And a look at tonight's U.S.-Soviet hockey game. That's all tonight on Nightline, right after your late local news on most of these ABC stations.